right, guys, so um, <clears throat> for those of you guys who don't know, who aren't aware, uh, Yitha Sins, who uh, is, is now former community manager for WoW at Blizzard, uh, his department was let go. Was uh, They were laid off yesterday during the, uh, during the cuts, whenever they cut 800 jobs. Um, I believe it was right before the earnings call yesterday. So, uh, unfortunately, like a lot of people know Yitha Sins. He was very active in the classic community and... Uh, especially as far as like content creators and stuff go, he was a big part of um, kind of like our, our line of communication, right? For not just the community, but for content creators. And uh, hey, can I do this? Can I not do this? Like what? Like what is this? What is that? So uh, from like a you know more like professional, right? Pro megalol professional level, um, like that. That's that's a, a pretty a pretty big loss, I think, for uh, fans of classic WoW and. Uh, also for the content creators, for me on a personal level, on a personal level, uh, whenever I got banned and I was trying to contact people, whenever I got banned back, you know, over a year ago now, uh, banned from streaming vanilla WoW private servers on YouTube. That's what I was, that's what I was known for. I played a rep paladin. My stream was growing to be a pretty decent size, uh, getting like five to 600 viewers, uh, again, like a year and a half ago on YouTube. And, uh, at least over the last couple of weeks before my ban, of course, the last couple of weeks before my ban. And, uh, basically I, I, I would email this guy, email that guy, discord, Twitter. Like I, I was trying to get a hold of a bunch of people and, uh, the one guy to actually like really respond and, and was willing to reach out and talk to me, uh, was Yithesins, right? And Yithesins told me back then, he's like, yeah, man, like basically these are the rules is what you can do, what you can't do. Um, despite the fact that I just got in trouble for a DMCA, you know, a, a legal private server criminal, like, all that memory, right? Like that's they know right they understand he's like you know these are real people right and, and he told me he's like yeah you know I, I watched a lot of your content like you're you're a really good content creator uh you know about the game and and you're obviously very passionate and you definitely have like a future like your, your streams are entertaining it's a lot of fun uh you definitely have a future doing this too so like that's somebody who uh has been supportive of me and and what i've been doing uh he was the one guy really who's been supportive of me personally uh since i got banned as far as like blizzard stuff goes so I really, like I said earlier, I, I don't know if I would have, uh, I, for all I know, I could, I could have been, I could have done what a lot of people suggested I do is just like hop around and, and make a Patreon and have a bunch of people, uh, support me through that while I hop around different streaming platforms. I was really hoping Yithisans was going to be on a classic cast soon. Can't believe he's going to be on stream. Very yeah, I would excited. Love yeah. Thank you, Losu. Thank you for the seven months, man. I would love, I would love to have Yithisans on a classic cast. So. That might be something that uh, that might be something that we talk about. I, I think that would be a lot of fun. I, I've wanted to get this on Classic Cast for a long time, actually, but um, the 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 timing and just like what he could do and with work and whatnot uh, wasn't quite right. But I would love to have you this on the Classic Cast and, and Code Man Red. Thank you for the three months, man. I I, I appreciate both you guys. Thank you guys. <clears throat> so uh, change my title in game. Have I not changed? Am I still sitting in the the top top gear section? Or not top gear. Uh, Grand Tour section. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, but yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much the point. Um, yeah, what a terrible person I know, right, Reggie? Yeah, what a terrible person, yeah, talking about me. No, so, so yeah, I think, um, uh, no, I'm not in Hello Kitty online section, Epiclesis. I'm gonna go ahead and call Yetha since he said he's ready, so, yeah, we can just, uh, we can just talk to him, like, <clears throat> See the answers. Yeah, and and, and uh, this isn't going to be something like super serious, right? I, I think we'll we'll just hang out a little bit, we'll chat, and um, I don't know, I'd be down to play some games or whatever. We might play some Apex, right? Apex Legends. Back rank. Thank you for the prime, dude. Appreciate that, man. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, dude? How's it going? Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of you know one of those days. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, guys. By the way, uh, Yithisins is Sakar on Twitch. S A K. Do I pronounce that right? I've always yeah, called you Sakar. Right. Okay, okay. S A K. A A R. Uh, if you guys want to give Sakar a follow, um, there you go. There that is. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Sakar. Uh, give him a follow, and uh, you, you stream occasionally. You might you yeah. might have a little bit more time to stream. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah. suddenly come into some free time uh, that <laughs> might might pop up. <laughs> yeah yeah no so so you're you're doing pretty good i, I know today's today's probably been a really weird day for you i mean 
I, I've actually been in a similar situation as you, but yeah, go go ahead and kind of like let us know. Yeah, it's it's been it's been really weird. Like, uh, I'm one of those people that's like a hardcore creature of habit, so mm -hmm. I. I'm very comfortable and contempt doing like the same things constantly. I mean, I've played WoW for over a decade. Let's be real here. Uh, mm. I'm happy clearing out raids and gearing up and doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, and I yeah. mean, even last night after we, a bunch of us went out that, you know, a bunch of us that got laid off and some of our friends that didn't, we went out to eat. And uh, when I got home, typically what I do when I get home is I just look at the forums. like. Even though, even though, like I'm not on the clock or anything, like it's I do it for just because that's actually like a hobby of mine. Like I, mm -hmm. will, I will do that anyway. Uh, right. I'm sitting there just reading through, trying to find stuff that I want to I want to chase tomorrow or work on. I, I tweeted this out earlier today where I was like, it, "This is this is weird. Like this is what I normally do, but I yeah I can't chase this anymore. Like I, this isn't my job. So it's like it, it's real strange. And this morning, uh, I woke up and the entire time I was like. I was like, yeah, it's about time I need to get ready for work. And so I got up and, and got ready uh, and started looking for my badge because I lose my badge all the time. Like <laughs> right. it's, to the, it's to the point where the guards know that I probably forgot my badge if I pull up to, to there with my window down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't find my badge. And then about, I think I have four or five minutes of looking and I remembered, I was like, oh, yesterday actually happened. That was yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. That, wasn't a, that wasn't some nightmare. That was real. I was like, yeah. oh, that's real. Yeah. I mean, I was in like Soraya. Thank you for the eight months, man. Appreciate it. Uh, I, I was, I was very much like in the same situation. Like whenever I first started streaming, actually a few months before I first started streaming, I was working in college football and I thought I was gonna have like a full-time job whenever I graduated. And, uh, basically for me, it was like, Hey, I was graduating. I was there for two years. They told me they were going to take care of me and like, Oh, they see me being with them for a long time and all that. And then yeah. some, some stuff fell through with administration. It was kind of out of their hands. And it was just like overnight, it was like, boom, all of a sudden, like, I'm not going to be there anymore. And, uh, so I can, I can definitely, uh, I can, I can definitely relate. So yeah, I don't know just, if uh, I don't know if that's like better or worse from what, at least my experience with this was, you know, luckily yeah. the, the cool, I guess I wouldn't, shouldn't say the cool thing, but the, uh, the good thing was hearing from a bunch of people in the industry who, uh, unfortunately this is common. This is, uh, there's a lot of people in this industry who this they've been they know the routine like they've been laid off before and they know uh they know kind of how it goes yeah and uh oh, i forgot i forgot what i was talking about oh yeah um a lot of people they um they have no warning they just like come in one day and uh, uh they just all of a sudden it's just like this bomb has just dropped and they don't have a job anymore um for me like we had heard i mean you, you saw like the the articles and stuff like Mm -hmm. that mentioned that people would heard about this for a while like for me personally like i was hearing i think i was hearing rumors about this since like the beginning of december like late november is when we were like something's gonna happen soon yeah and the entire time it's you know the funny thing that happens at blizzard is employees are blizzard employees are the worst with keeping secrets with each other so uh we it's impossible to not know what goes on on that campus um so like we we were hearing you know the the kind of rumors, rumors going around and rumors and talks of like you know what departments are gonna get hit how many people uh all of that so like for a while i've been like i've been kind of knowing this was coming and i didn't know if i was gonna make it or not so at least it was you can kind of, you kind of prepare yourself but it's still like it didn't help uh it still did not help it was it was awful sitting in, <laughs> sitting in the room waiting to find out like we we came into work yesterday just and we couldn't do anything so we just like we just sat around yeah. like just waiting uh to hear anything uh, and dude then, that's got to be like sorry yeah. go ahead i didn't mean to cut you oh, off no, good good i was just going to say like it's such an empty feeling right cuz like you know like hey something might go down today I, I don't know what it is i don't know what what the deal is but it, it could be you know uh, i could not be here tomorrow i could see how that's like really hard to work like i i thought of the reality of being laid off but i didn't think of the reality of not being at blizzard if that makes any sense so that's like the super sad thing yeah here one second i gotta turn off i gotta turn off a script somebody was playing sound effects while i was while, while you were talking they heard oh. they heard that last part though yeah they heard that last part <laughs> i always i always forget that i have that on too um <clears throat> it's probably mcconnell it was it was not mcconnell it was actually probably McConnell. <laughs> yeah it was not mcconnell <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. No, dude, like, that's, I mean, that's one of the things, like, for us, man, speaking of McConnell, like, McConnell, myself, like, Asman, like, dude, like, when we all heard, like, that was the one thing, like, you know, just for us, because we, we see, like, how much, I mean, the people who are, like, the most interactive with that stuff, right, are a lot of times streamers are looking at the forums, and uh, they're looking at stuff like that, because yeah, and a lot of that's our content. content somewhere. Right, exactly. So, like, we see, like, how active you are with everybody, and, and specifically when it comes to classic, like, it's just you like that's that's what we feel like like we feel like it's literally like it's just you um so it was something that's like who now everybody's just kind of like okay like we're like who, who do we like who are we going to get information from like what's going to happen um and i don't know like if they if they have a plan for that to like all of a sudden like okay we got rid of this many people and we want to package like four people's jobs into one person now like i i, I don't know how that's going to go yeah there's so from what I've gathered so far, it uh, was uh, like they're they're, fig they're still figuring it out. They like legit don't. I don't want to say they just like straight up don't know, but because of the way it was structured and the way everything is has shifted into what it, into way it, the way it's basically being restructured now, they they don't know who's handling what. So it's basically kind of like a reset button for them. So uh, of, mm -hmm. of figuring out who is who's handling what, like who who's handling uh, influencers, who's who's uh, posting on the forums, which I assume it's still going to be Bornak, uh, who I was working, uh, working with before. Mm -hmm. So from my understanding, he's still going to be, he's still going to be blue posting. Um, as for like, uh, for Kyvax and lore, I assume it's, it's going to be pretty much business as usual for those guys, but I don't, I don't know where their, their responsibilities and roles are going to shift. Um, that's why I, I, I'm, I, you know, I want to make sure to make the point, I tweeted this out earlier, but, uh, for all the content creators, um, as soon as I figure out like who they're supposed to talk to, uh, I will like I will let you guys know if unless they already reach out to you, whoever this person yeah. reaches out to you. Like I just I literally don't know who's responsible. Now. And it's kind of unfortunate because we 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 work on building these relationships relationships with you guys so that you always know who to talk to. And it is not it, it has not been like the most stable thing. So it's this is another like bump in that road where it's like it's not it's it's unfortunate for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know for sure. And like, and I, uh, I, I also feel bad for like, I know I see a lot of people spamming lore stuff. I, I just like, I just want to say that it's, it's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that you don't, as a player, it's, I mean, it coming, me coming from an employee, knowing more on the inside, it's, uh, as a player, it's easy to miss, not to miss a lot of things, but to not see a lot of things on the other end. Uh, uh -huh. lore is actually an extremely nice person. Like he's, he was really fun to work with. Um, like I, I, I get that people like to meme him and everything. And I, I, you know, uh, I don't want to diminish, if, diminish if anyone, if he's ever like said anything in the past, that's ever upset anybody. But, uh, my experience with him has been wonderful. Like, like legit, I would, I would love, I would love to work with him again. It, yeah. it, it was fun to, to work with someone who had been on that team for so many years and to learn so much. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was that was it was really fun um i just wanted to make yeah. sure that i said that like i know people are still going to do it anyway but well like, i mean it's, yeah it's not, uh, of course Twitch chat yeah yeah it's Twitch chat it's, it's Twitch chat yeah and you got the caps and everything so yeah. like <laughs> that's just what they're gonna do <laughs> yeah um no i i think i think that's something that's that's rough like any time and like i know like whenever something is out of whenever something is out of the control of other people right and they mm -hmm. like let's say like you mean your co-workers right like you have people that work with you like every day and then all of a sudden someone's not gone and it's like well why did it happen to that guy why didn't it happen to me and then like th those people like generally speaking will will like feel guilty and oh, they, they yeah. feel bad as well dude so, survivor's guilt is a real thing especially in something like this um man it, it was heartbreaking this morning um mm -hmm. because i was getting messages from so to, to give you context half of my team was is gone um, mm. so the team that I am on that, that department doesn't exist anymore and right. half of us are gone and half of us stayed. And so that half is now on a different team, uh, and they're having to figure out all of their roles again, but it was, it's so heartbreaking because their desks aren't moved yet. So they had, the three of them had to walk in and go into the area where we all used to sit because they have to walk through our area to get to theirs. So like they have to see all of our empty desks. And sit down and realize that there is half the team that is not there anymore, and mm -hmm. it was 
it was there was like nothing that anyone could do it was nobody's fault like no one did anything wrong like it's the hard thing like it's i would love if i could have if i would have been given a reason that that i was picked so i could at least take it as a learning to be like okay right this is, this is why but we we were the fact that we were told multiple times that it you know this was not not performance based like it was literally just the jobs just don't exist anymore that mm -hmm. was that's rough and so that's hard on everyone else who stayed because that could have happened to them and they feel guilty because they stayed and we didn't mm -hmm. like one of the guys that uh i don't want to get it too sappy or make anyone like you know angry at like the decision and stuff that went down but like there's a lot of people that got let go that have like families and kids like for yeah. me for me I, it's just it's just me on my own so um it's not as bad if, if it happens to me and i would much rather happen have it happen to me than anyone who i work with who i know has a family so yeah yeah and that's and that's the hard part right because it's like uh, at that point like whenever you know you, ha you have 800 people that are getting cut and it's it's not 800 people's lives that you're affecting it's potentially thousands yeah. i mean you know you, you have people who have like they're married you have people who are married with kids you have people who have multiple kids like there there's so much of it going on that it, it gets it gets really really rough yeah so, yeah and what and what's what's awful is you just at blizzard like it's i'm pretty sure it's it's easy to see from like the outside but you're pretty close with leadership um mm -hmm. you never feel like leadership is different from from you you feel like you can talk to them about anything like if if when wow was uh, when uh, sorry not uh when jab was still like uh sorry jail and brack was still the ep of wow mm -hmm. um i felt like if i had an issue i could bring it up to him right and it wouldn't be a problem whatsoever and that's pretty crazy to think that i am comfortable to go to an executive and and talk to him about what i think is a is a problem that the game has um that's pretty incredible. Like I've never felt any sort of the blizzard never felt any sort of barrier between anything like that. So when you know that you can be very human with people that are that high above you, like, you know, that they did not, they did not want to do that. Like, and it wasn't a light decision. Like I guarantee you that like J Allen lost probably sleep over it. Like it, yeah. Like it, it was something that was not easy for him. Yeah. Well, and, and it wasn't a Blizzard thing. It was more of an Activision thing, or like how how does that work? Yeah. So, from and this could be you know totally wrong, but from my understanding was this was something that was basically numbers dictated. Um, okay. So like, it like the WoW team didn't even know, the WoW team didn't know who was who was leaving at least on uh or the WoW team didn't know who was leaving on the publishing team I should say, so like they had no idea until I posted that I was gone. Mm -hmm. it was it was kept very secret until basically we were in the meetings and officially told yeah did they did they tell like how how did they tell you guys like did did they bring you in like one by yeah. one did you get an email like so it's the the way it's kind of done and you'll see this is common i'm kind of i'm kind of curious yeah, yeah just because like and i found i found out this is pretty common through the industry uh and the way it's usually done when they do layoffs is they pretty much try to keep it a secret as much as possible because it could you know it could have you know uh financial impacts to the company i i get it uh i know a lot of people were mad that blizzard kind of kept it hidden uh, who was going to be affected but they have to it's they they literally have to um and the way it kind of works is you know we sat around waiting we knew it was going to happen on tuesday we sat around right. waiting uh, all day um we kind of all brought in like donuts and just sat around and kind of enjoyed each other's like company as a team for like the last day. Um, and I think at about 11, I think it was about 11. We got, uh, one-on-ones scheduled. Uh, -huh. uh, and of course everyone immediately, immediately compares, you know, what time slot was yours? Um, where's yours at? And trying to figure out if, you know, these are group meetings, if, uh, trying to figure out if there's like some sort of time dictation of who who is getting let go when who's staying so we found out uh half of my team was in one in one meeting room and half of my team was in one in, in another and so we were like well clearly one half is gone and one half is staying we don't know which is which so it yeah it's it's, it's rough you're kind of like 
your brain is awful to yourself because you have paranoia of figuring out who is who. Trying to trying to figure out who you know. You're just trying to see like which which one of us like who who's it gonna be? It's just like yeah. kind of like a weird thing. Yeah. Yeah, trying to figure out who who's the person that's, that's or which you know, which group of people is gonna be let go. Uh, and this is like right before lunch, so as everyone's you know everyone who's affected by this is getting their meeting scheduled. Um, mm-hmm. We're all around like the courtyard, and everyone's walking up to each other and asking, you know, you know, what time slot do you have? What time slot do you have? And you know, the crazy theories come out in speculation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what ended up happening was, at least for us, you know, when it came time, um, it was me and two other, me and two of my coworkers in in a meeting room with someone from uh, someone from HR and uh, our director, who which was which was great. Uh, we found out that our our director asked to be the person in there to be the person that was the one that was that was actually laying us off um which mm-hmm. he, he was the person we worked for um and that was like a huge thing of like respect um that meant a lot to me because that person was the guy that he he was the person that hired me when right. i was a, when i was a game master he gave me the ta and then at the end of my ta he was like do you want to stay do you want to stay with right us? and gave me the job and uh it was so it was kind of like a cl- like a moment of closure almost yeah it really was because my entire time as a as a cm was under under him and at uh-huh. least under a cm for a while was under him uh and it was it was good that meant a lot i'm glad he got to do that because i know it meant something to him yeah and it's what's worse is the person from hr who's who's like you know doing this is um is a blizzard employee too Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, and you know, we're it, Blizzard's a big family, so it's that was rough. Uh, right. I felt worse for him than I did for myself of getting laid off because, and he, I mean, he even cried with us because yeah. it's you know you have to lay off people that you work with. It's not, it's not fun. It's yeah. not a, it's not a fun thing to go through, and I felt so bad for him. Yeah. That's and, so rough. And he's like one of the nicest people too. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd never like personally interacted with him in a lot, but um, I would, you know, see him in hallways or like in the cafe and he was, he's always like incredibly, incredibly nice. So it's like, you, you know, that like that broke him. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard. I, I, I'm thinking like whenever like you're a guy who you, you, you basically worked your way up from the bottom to, to the point where you were at. Yeah. I where was a, you, you were I was a game a master yeah. in Austin, right? Or is that is that after? Well, how did you start? So I was hired originally on a contract position, like a temp okay. game master by it. So the way it works is, um, if you when, the way you become a game master is you go through like a, a contract company essentially, um, mm-hmm. and you are basically on a temp like work arrangement for a couple months. Uh, and at the end of the couple months, they sometimes they can keep people, sometimes they can't. It's just it depends on if they have if they have headcount to do that to do that and if uh game releases are coming up they'll usually you know they'll try to keep a bunch more on and so uh-huh. for me i was i was brought on during the uh, overwatch rush right before overwatch was released so i uh-huh. i came through as a contract game master and made it to the end and they uh they basically take you into a room at the end of it and kind of do the same thing and they tell you if you know you're making it or not and it was really funny because my contract was most of the Overwatch launch. And so um, mm-hmm. my first day as an actual full-fledged Blizzard employee was the Legion launch. So, uh, God, I... Uh, it sounds pretty bad. <laughs> it was, sounds it was pretty fun. rough. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was interesting. So uh, uh. His, name is, uh, his name is Andy in the uh. Uh, Austin office who uh, is very dear to my heart because he was, he was great to work for as well. Um, he came in and said, and just kind of like slapped his hands and went, "Congrats, guys! You're uh, you're all Blizzard employees. Uh, your first day is going to be overtime because it's Legion launch. Welcome to the family." <laughs> <laughs> and we were all kind of laughing with him because we were like, "It's like, all right, let's do this." Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was God. It was really it was so much fun. And uh, I did that for a couple months. Went to uh, went to BlizzCon as an employee for the first time, and then I think I, before, right before, the day before I was getting on the plane, um, I applied mm-hmm. for this program where you get to transfer from uh, 
uh, Austin to Irvine. Um, you can right. there's a small CS team in Irvine that you can actually transfer to if you mm -hmm. have a tr if you're basically on a track to go into other departments. And uh, I had applied for it at the recommendation of my managers, who which was funny at the time. He basically had said, um, "Hey, Caden, you um, you're probably gonna do you're probably gonna do some cool stuff. Uh, you definitely should be doing more than being just a game master." Uh, yeah. you're great at you're great at what you do now so you'll transition to anything you just moved to austin you have no family you have no kids you have nothing <laughs> tying you down you should leave <laughs> which yeah, i was like, nothing to lose <laughs> i was like thank you i guess <laughs> and uh <sighs> i got told that uh, uh because i was so new they had to actually have executive approval to send me out um so executives had to basically sign off on me transferring because I was so new to the Irvine uh, Irvine office. Typically, you're supposed to be there for you're supposed to be a full Blizzard employee for a year before you can do that. So I had to get special approval to do it, which uh, the executive of CS had to sign off. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, that'll lose you. Uh, hold, on. Like, my, hold on, hold on, it's my roommate. Uh, oh. Hold on. I. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you had to get executive approval approval to transfer out because you said. Uh, sorry, by the way, a <laughs> roommate. Uh, <laughs> no, you're good. Um, uh, and uh, it was, it was, it was crazy because I didn't think I would get accept. I didn't think I would get accepted. Then um, uh, I found out literally the couple of hours before I was going to get on a plane to go to BlizzCon. So it was it was it was really cool to know that I uh -huh. was, was going to literally come back and and live there. That's crazy. Transferred out, and I think I was I was here for like four months. Applied for a um, a, a community position actually on the heroes team, got denied because they wanted they didn't they didn't think I had enough experience, uh, which was which was they were right. I needed to I needed to do more to especially to do what they wanted me to do. Uh -huh. uh, and then a month later, I applied to the WoW spot and got the TA, uh, ended my TA and got hired on as a CM. And there you go, dude. Ended up in the role. Yeah. And it all that happened over, I think, a year. I think I, yeah, I think about a year. So I, when I started my TA, it was about a month after I started as a contract game master. So in a year, uh -huh. I went from contract to game, to uh, contract to, associate game master agm i think is what it was and then to full game master then to ta in like a year's time basically yeah in like a year <laughs> that's insane actually well and the thing dude like nowadays too it seems like people people don't really get into get into a, a job or like you know a company or whatever and it doesn't seem like people uh really work their way up through a company as much anymore um Am I wrong, or like how how common was that, or how rare was that that like that was your situation? So it's rare to do it as fast as I, do, but yeah. it's it's very very common at Blizzard. Like okay. a lot of the a lot of the folks that you see that you're probably very familiar with, at least or that you associate with on the design teams, they uh, they came through CS or QA. They work their way into it. A, a lot of the design team actually came up through QA. Uh, one of uh, one of my like professional heroes, his name is uh, his name is Don Adams. He actually started as a game master like ten years ago, over ten years ago, and now is a uh, a senior uh, a senior quest designer, a senior game designer, a senior quest designer. He's a, he was a senior quest designer on WoW, but now he's a senior designer on uh, uh, on Team Three. Okay. Yeah, so so it it does happen. It's just not. It usually doesn't happen that fast. Basically. Yeah, it usually is over over a uh, of a, over a career instead of over a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brode, no, hey. Brode is an example. Worked uh, QA night shifts and then yeah. ended up being a game director for you know our stuff. You know, actually, I, I hope I'm I'm hope I'm remembering this correctly, but so Kevin Jordan, who we had on Classic Cast before. Uh, Kevin Jordan, for those of you guys who don't know, is the original like vanilla WoW uh, developer, like of all the class. Like he, he was the dev that worked on all the class design, right? Every single class. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, I think he said he actually started as like an IT guy, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think he started as an IT guy, and then he worked his way up, and next thing you know, he's, like, designing every single class of our favorite game. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's a, you there's know. a great a great success story of, I think, I think is it KO? I think it might be KO on the Heroes team, where he, uh-huh. at one point, was the janitor. Really? At the, at the very, very beginning, he... Uh, he, he was either a janitor first or he worked on QA for Warcraft two or three. One yeah. Of the, one of the two. I don't know which one he did first, but he and he's up, working on, he's working on hots now. Uh, he, oh, hold on. This is, this is where, oh, I get, so this sorry, is where it gets crazy. Okay. okay. Uh, he, he at one point was either QA first and then a janitor or then janitor, janitor QA. Um, and when the, when old blizzard used to basically be title to title, so it would, work on a title, launch a title, work on a title, launch a title, done. Um, he he didn't have a job because QA was over. There's nothing else to QA. Right. And he stayed on as a janitor, literally oh. cleaning toilets. And wow. befriended Chris Metzen at the time. And Chris Metzen basically turned him into his right-hand man. And he kind of worked his way up and then started working with like the StarCraft team. And then he ended up being a... Um, uh, I can't remember what his title is on the Heroes team, but he was like, I think he's like an assistant game director, or like a game lead for Heroes. Really? He, yeah, he, it's crazy hearing his, hearing like a story yeah. like this. Well, they probably, I mean, they said he had experience like, you know, cleaning toilets. They probably, that's why they probably moved into Hots. Oh. So, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to put you in that situation. Oh. I'm not going to put you in that situation. No, but yeah, <laughs> no, I think, uh, no, that's great. Cause like, uh, and this is what people like don't understand. A lot of times whenever people like, People who are like blue collar, like hard workers, like people who are willing to like do anything and like get after it. These are the people that I, I think are like the best workers, no matter what role they're in. Right. Because like obviously like a smart deal. He's like, you know what? I want to work at Blizzard. This is something I want to do. And I want to work my way up. And I think that's I, I, I don't know. I think that's really commendable to get a chance to like come back and stick with a company and, and end up being like a, a, a big time guy in a, in a big position. Yeah. So. And it's that mm-hmm. it was the a super unfortunate thing about the whole thing that the whole layoff that happened was, uh, man, there was there was people who you like you had heard stories of, mm-hmm. like you just kind of heard stories of, and then you finally meet and you're like, oh, that's the person who's been here for so long who who did all of that. Like mm-hmm. uh, a friend of mine who was over, he was the the CM uh, SEM over on the um, the Hearthstone team. He had been a Blizzard for over thirteen years. He was, I think, the number. If the number, I have the number correctly. He was the hundred and twenty seventh employee that Blizzard hired. Yeah. And he was he was let go yesterday. He was the first blue poster ever. Really. He was the first blue poster. If any of like, I know you have a lot of uh, classic like fans in here. Yeah. But, like, if anyone remembers Fangtooth from back in the day, who that, was the Fangtooth. Murloc. Fangtooth. Yeah. 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 Fangtooth. Yeah. Let me load this up the first blue poster and he was one of the ones that was laid off yesterday which that was the one that like broke my heart because he'd been there for over 13 years he was uh what was his uh what was his I icon actually, i actually think he's been a... over there for 15 been from there for more than 15 years actually i might be wrong fangtooth was uh was was his icon like a it was a murloc was it a it was murloc a... Oh, it was a murloc there it is yeah 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 there it is yeah that was a that was a tough one Wow. Yep. That's crazy. I dude, I remember when they they you, did you ever see like those old uh like meme videos where they would go and they would take like a foreign film and then they would uh they'd like dub they wouldn't dub it over but they would put subtitles on for like the CMs and whoever yes. else was like involved. I remember <laughs> there being one about Fangtooth and Paladins and Ghostcrawler uh-huh. that was super funny. That's crazy. So that was Fangtooth. Yeah, he was one of the ones. Uh, uh, if you went through the um, uh, uh, the kind of list of people who were tweeting out, uh, uh, no, I won't say his name because I don't know if he's he comfortable with me saying his name. Right, but, right. Uh, yeah, he was one of the ones that was that was like, oh, and then the long the <laughs> the one that uh, so far that is the longest tenured one that I've heard of was uh, nineteen years. Nineteen uh, years. Nineteen years. There's a a. a incredibly sweet person that we worked with who was a part of the retail team that is responsible for the relationship with uh like activision and kind of making sure that all of our agreements with um 
uh, retailers are kind of upheld. So say if, you know, Blizzard has like an end cap at a store, like a Target or a Walmart or something like that. He's the one that yeah. makes sure that those are all that those are all correct. Those are all being done correctly. And we're getting the correct numbers from those retailers as far as like what's being sold through, how much they're buying and lets us know how well we're doing in the, in the retail front. And yeah, he, that was, that was a hard one. He's cause he's incredibly nice. Uh, and yeah, 19 years. Uh, yeah. there was a person in, uh, in the shipping department who'd been there for over 13 years. He was, he was let go too, which he, good God, he, he made my life so much easier when, uh, the previous person who was running the influencer manager spot for wow, mm -hmm. when, uh, he left, uh, I had to kind of take over a lot of that. And it, I know it's, it's, it's funny to meme about shipping, how, how hard could shipping be, but man, when you're shipping out, you know, hundred something boxes that you have to get mm -hmm. all done in like, you know, a couple of days to get them all mailed out all over the, all over the world. You're like, that's a, that's a tall feat to ask for for just one uh, person, and uh, Carlos helped me out a lot of getting all that done, and I nah, I feel yeah. real bad about that one. He started off in the billing department as a OG game master, and worked his way up, and and worked his way up into. I, I want to say he was in charge of like shipping. He, I mean, he always seemed like he was. I I don't know his, what his actual title <laughs> he was. Hel he helped you out either way. <laughs> he helped me out either way, and, made, and, and worked miracles. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel real bad about that one. And what then, do you uh, What do you think? Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, yeah. I, I was just gonna ask, like, what do you think is is the thing that you're gonna miss the most, like day to day, and and just overall, like about being there. Oh man, day to day is probably gonna be that that feeling that I can walk onto the 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 dev floor. That feeling that I could yeah. just walk into the into the wow area and go talk to whatever does who whoever designer I wanted to go talk to. Yeah. Kind of like the, the community aspect of it basically. That was yeah, that was really cool. Uh once yeah. I finally got comfortable doing that and feeling like I could go up and talk to anybody, like that that was mm -hmm. that was a pretty cool thing to know that you know, I could walk up to any of these guys who've been involved with all these all these parts of WoW over all these years that, you know, I've I spent my whole life playing. Like that's really cool. Like that's it's a such a cool feeling. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna miss that. I'm gonna miss being a stakeholder, which it's yeah. it's pretty cool when you know something's going on and you know they are concerned about the community impact. Like yeah. it'll be an actual conversation in a, in a in a in a meeting where we're discussing of stuff that we're gonna do and people will turn to me and 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 ask like, is there any concerns of how this is gonna impact community? What do you think these are? And that's where I get to basically shine professional and do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, like, how, like, it's, it, to me, just from my perspective, and, like, we talk about, like, community and all this stuff and, like, Classic WoW and uh, just, like, everybody involved, like, you know, people who, people who are excited for Classic, people who are excited for the game to come, whether it's the community that exists right now out of game or uh, just playing the game itself and, like, you know, feeling like you're a part of something, you're on your server, there's people that you know, uh, and, and you kind of feel at home there, uh, I think it's funny how how well that actually relates like where it, it just seems like you you guys had like a very like uh easy going isn't the right word but maybe like um uh, it's a very comfortable environment to where like you felt like you could go and have like genuine conversation with people and mm -hmm. talk to people it was definitely one of those things where it's like your your ability as a professional is kind of like expected and understood and it mm -hmm. was never it's never a question at blizzard so ever it's it's hard to get at uh it's hard to get into to Blizzard and just being there and just earning that earning that spot at that company. Everyone already knows you know what you know what you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. The question from there is like it's it's pretty much like culture fits and and just you know making friends with everyone. Uh, and it's 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 really cool. Like I've made so many friends on that uh, on on team two that I I followed for years. And yeah. never thought they would ever know who I was, who, you know, I have their, I have their phone numbers. Like that's, that's yeah. crazy. Like that's, I never expected that yeah. to happen. And so that's, that's a hard thing to leave because it's, you get, so you're accepted very, very quickly at Blizzard. Um, yeah. At least for, that was my experience, you know, 
when I got there, it was it was immediate acceptance. Um, especially when you know I, I I started working on the community team, and I would introduce myself as like, oh, I was a game master, and hmm. almost everyone at Blizzard at this point, at some point, has worked either QA or CS. So they they immediately have this thing, have this bond with you, right? Like all the people who came up through CS, like just know each other. Uh, it's it's, it's like almost someone, like almost like a brotherhood. Yeah, almost someone said yeah. instant cred. It really is. It's instant cred. Uh, I befriended people immediately, just being like, "Oh, you used to work in CS," and they're like, "Yeah," and then you start sharing war stories <laughs> of of what it's like working in customer service. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and like, I mean, the situation is like. I mean, obviously, it's pretty rough, and and this is something that a lot of people are upset about, and uh, a lot of people really, like I said, they 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 feel for you, they resonate with you, because like that, like you were the connection to so many people, right? Um, as far as like the connection to WoW, the the line of communication, in terms of like again, especially with like classic news, uh, I know like you were basically like the only guy in my eyes that was actively like hey like you know even if even if nothing was being said even if there wasn't a dev water cooler because obviously we know like when a dev water cooler is being done like the devs actually have to like stop working and then they have to work on the dev water cooler right yeah so they, those take a lot of work which i've i said before like i i don't understand how ghost crawler managed to do so many of those because yeah they take they take a while <laughs> they take quite a bit of work <laughs> yeah. uh to get done like it's it's an ordeal right and so yeah, oh, I, I, I was, just, like, it's like kind of yeah. it's kind of unfortunate that it feels like I was the the point of con like the point of contact at least for the classic team because yeah. uh, I mean just sharing what like the the classic team's heart is they they are always wanting to to talk to everybody they it's it's unfortunate because when you when you work in when you work on a product and you're trying to figure out how you basically are launching it and you have to kind of figure out how do you create a communication strategy around it so like you mm -hmm. don't you can't talk about it too early because anything could change mm -hmm. and you don't want to kind of shoot yourself in the foot with something you've basically already already said i mean you guys know how it is like there's been so many things over the years that blizzard said oh we'll do this and it that it's just doesn't happen uh mm -hmm. and so at least with classic coming up with a you know it's a strategy for classic you know we're it's a kind of a constant evolving process ever since we announced it where we were like uh trying to figure out what did we what do we want to do exactly uh -huh. uh, and the and there's a ton of ideas like the the class the team specifically that's working on classic has a bunch of ideas and wants to basically be super involved but it's figuring out what's the right timing to do all that kind of stuff um yeah and that's always the hard part that's like the hard part of our job is figuring out when is the best time to do this uh, but I mean, there's going to be, so I hope there's someone else that comes up and, and, uh, at least of the, of the folks that are still left doing community work. I, I hope there's someone else that starts talking about classic to fill in that kind of void where I'll be honest, I didn't have a lot to share. Uh, I was just kind of trying to update as much as I could because I just wanted to, uh, it was never like an official thing of we need to keep doing this. It was just because I was like, ah, it's been a while. I should at least let them know that I know they're not, they, that, that, you know, that we're not dead. <laughs> right. Let right. Them know, like they're still alive. <laughs> well, and, and dude, it goes a long way. It really does because they, uh, I, I know we talk about it all the time, whether it's, you know, myself, stay safe and tips or, you know, whether we're talking to McConnell or Asman or, or whoever, right. Nixium, all, all these guys, right. Crom, everybody mm -hmm. kind of like, Anytime that there's at least something like just like we're, we're like goldfish, dude, you put you put a little flake <laughs> in the water and we all rush to it, you know, so, so it's no like kidding. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I, we'll take anything. We'll run with that. it, dude. I hadn't picked up on that. <laughs> so like any, any like any little bit counts. Right. And uh, I know in a, in a time where seemingly right, it seems that a lot of times people don't want to give out a lot of information or they don't want to say anything because they're more worried about the, the repercussions of saying anything at all. They end up not saying anything. And I think having you there to kind of just be like, Hey guys, we're still alive. Like you said, mm -hmm. um, like even, even something like that does, does matter. You know, like you, you had that post like a couple weeks ago where we looked at this, um, we actually talked about it on classic cast 
where you were saying like, hey, like we've been working on a number of things to hopefully get out to you guys soon. Nothing to share on it specifically right now, but work is happening every day, both on Classic as well as things we want to communicate with you guys, to you guys without, about Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself look forward to sharing more details uh, and so on, right? So something as little as that to know like, hey, like something is coming in the future and at least like it, it, it makes the Classic community and it makes us feel like we're not – uh, we're not an afterthought, you know, and, and, and I yeah. think that's a big deal. Uh, I, I do think that's a big deal. So, yeah, it, tr trust me when I say at least with working with the, the, the classic guys, uh, they you guys are not an afterthought. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much every time I went over there into the classic pit to kind of <clears throat> to talk with, you know, Brian and Omar and everybody uh, mm -hmm. who I'm pretty sure are watching this right now. Hey, guys, I miss you. <laughs> uh, I know a couple of I know at least two of them that are watching. Uh I, uh, you know, um, they are incredibly enthusiastic. Um, yeah. they, no joke. Every time I walked in, they were, uh, they would mention a video that, you know, one of you guys had done or a topic you guys had talked about and they're like, God, oh, it's a really good point. And they would kind of go through and discuss like philosophies on, you know, what you guys talked about. Hmm. Um, they like, they are very much in tune with the classic community and to the point where I was kind of a little shocked, uh, where I was like, I. I kept trying to explain who some of you guys were and then uh, at least to, so they know who it was when I was talking about you guys and they would already know they would be filling in the blanks before I could say anything. Uh, yeah. They, wow. they are very, very, very in tune. Uh, like they yeah. see the stuff that you guys make. They see the conversations that you have. Like uh, they, I, like I promise you guys, they're, they're seeing everything that you say. They're seeing everything you say, seeing everything you're creating, everything you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, well, that, that might be a bad thing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's a bad thing. <laughs> no, that's that's awesome. That, I mean, that that's really uh, that feels really good to know. Like, you know, whenever we do a classic cast or whenever we talk about something that like our our, our voices are being heard, right? And it, it's not. I'm sure it's not just us, but I'm sure it's just like the community in general too. And you know, like you said, you go and you read the forums every night. That's what you're used to doing and relaying all that information to everybody. Um, so I, I think that. Uh, yeah, I, I that 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 to me like that makes me feel really good about like you know uh, am I am I there's times whenever I bring up a topic or I talk about something and I'm like I have talked about this for like the hundredth time like does anybody hear this you know but but to know that like there's there's people who have influence out there listening uh, really really does mean a lot for sure yeah like I mean I, I could seriously just go down a list and start naming all you guys that I've had conversations about like mm -hmm. uh, it's it's crazy. I didn't expect the, I didn't expect them to get in tune with that community as fast as they did. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe to the point where they were even in tune with you guys before the project ever existed. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, no, that was, that was another it, thing. Yeah. That was, uh, that was another thing. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're a bunch of good dudes. Uh, they, uh, they were, they were great. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I, I am going to, I'm going to, I miss the, I miss the enthusiasm already uh, because I could go over or send a message to one of them uh, about something I noticed and we could, we could seriously have a conversation about whatever it was, the philosophy of, is this right? Is this wrong? How do we, uh, how do we feel about it? And kind of figuring out, um, it, it, it was cool to also hear that they were interested in what I thought philosophy was what I thought the philosophy philosophy would be. They were, mm -hmm. they were curious of what I, I even thought was what classic is. Uh, mm -hmm. and so it was, it's really, really cool to have that kind of those conversations. And I'm hoping that the communication in, in the future somehow can be some of those conversations because they are by far the coolest conversations I've had. Uh, I, I was what I was referring to in my post of there. I mean, they're even talking about things where it's, uh, I'm trying to think of a really good example right now, but uh, how about? Um, sorry, we're turning this into a classic cast, basically. But uh, <laughs> I know, hey, uh, which probably should happen at some point. We could probably have you on classic cast. That might be another discussion. Yeah, but, I'll, uh, I'll table that one if I ever do it. I'll table that one in case I ever do a classic cast, and I'll use that as an example to whenever I'm talking about this. There we it's go. A, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you guys have asked me to do it for a long time, and I've I've always wanted to, but it's just like you were talking about earlier. It's the timing. It's always been the mm -hmm. timing, and. There's a, a lot of free time now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. If hopefully, you, I don't hopefully know if not too long. I don't know if you've heard. Uh, I have uh, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit of free time now. Yeah, 
No, I uh, yeah, I I I, I, I might have heard a thing or two about that, <laughs> but no, I think I mean. Honestly, dude, I, I think with all, all the support that you're getting and everything, I, I think that you might not have too much free time for long, so we better we better get you on Classicast sooner than later. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I gotta I gotta figure out what I'm 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 gonna do next. It's 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 just hard because uh, I never thought I would not I would not work on WoW. I would never thought I would not work at Blizzard. So it's I'm still working up the courage to still uh, work on the resume and stuff, but. Mm -hmm. I had a, I it's kind of weird updating your yeah. resume, right? Like you don't expect to have to update it. Yeah, I thought I was yeah. never gonna have to. Uh, yeah, I and I and this is this is really I I do want to mention this because this this made my day of. Uh, um, I sent I sent emails to um. To uh, uh, the game director Ian, mm -hmm. as well as to our EP John Height or, the EP John Height. I can't say our EP. Um, right. yeah. God, it sucks. Yeah. Um, I sent I sent emails to him, basically, you know, you know, thanking thanking them for all of the all the experience, and uh, uh, I think J John Height emailed me back almost immediately, and just mm -hmm. was just asking me if I was okay. And yeah, that was that was a lot. That that was that was that's good. cool. Uh, I know. I mean, whenever... I mean, that relationship with him. Yeah. I think, uh, and and I got to talk to John actually for a little bit at BlizzCon, and oh yeah, I remember, uh, I remember that. Yeah, we yeah, was, him that from the interview with the uh, that we got mm -hmm. you guys in, right? Yeah, him and him and Brian. Uh, Brian had to leave because he's getting ready for the classic panel, and uh, Ian answered. Oh. Guys, stop memeing. <laughs> Ian answered <laughs> me too. Uh, he yeah, yeah. he answered a message I sent earlier, but I I made sure to follow it up with an email. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. I think uh, I I got a really good vibe from from Bron, uh, Brian Omar and John. Like all, all yeah. those guys seem to be really passionate about classic and uh, about the community and and just like you know him just hanging out and talking with us for you know as long as he did. I mean I think we we sat there and talked for like thirty minutes just kind of talking about classic and just whatever. And uh, I, I I could really get that from him that yeah. that he was somebody who gen genuinely cares. Like you can you can tell when you talk to those guys about that project, you can tell it is a pure passion project for them that mm -hmm. any, everyone involved wants to be on there. They want to be the people that are, they're pulling this off. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they want, they want to do that. It's, they understand that players want it and they also have the passion that they want it themselves. Yeah. And that goes, yeah. that goes a long way on a project. It really, really does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you have, I mean, speaking of them being supportive of, and kind of looking out for you, I know there's a, it looks like there's some people in the Austin office. I don't know if you saw in the chat, but they said they're also wishing you the best and, and hope you bounce back and stuff. Aww. I mean, people that you used to work with like over a year ago. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I miss the, I miss all you people in the Austin office, whoever's mm -hmm. watching. I miss you guys. Mm -hmm. That's uh, yeah, that it's, it's really cool. Be having the experience of working in two offices and, and kind of having the relationship with those people. Like Austin's really, really cool because it's at least with, uh, in like CS, it's very, um, you're kind of in cubicles next to each other. It's not like a, it looks more like an office space than you'd think, but it actually doesn't at the same time because there's like statues all over people's desk and all sorts of stuff on the walls. Like it's, it's heavily decorated and themed to whatever you want your desk to be. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it feels pretty collaborative more than you'd think, even though yeah. it's a call center and you get really close relationships with the people on your team. Uh, to the point where my uh, senior that I used to work for still checks in on me like every couple of every couple of weeks. Like he still messages me and like asking me what uh what I'm up to and how everything's going. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I I love those guys a lot. That was have you that was really have cool. you thought about the possibility of I mean they they posted a bunch of jobs and this is something that they're trying to like. The, the, I guess they they cut a bunch of people and they posted a bunch of jobs for like new development positions, right? Developer positions. Have mm -hmm. you thought about the possibility of of reapplying to Blizzard, to uh, to go back as a dev? So, uh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I uh, people at Blizzard did not want me to leave, and I did not want to leave Blizzard. Mm -hmm. So there will never ever be hard feelings. I will never hold it against anyone that you know a bunch of us got laid off because no one wanted to do it no one wanted to be there no one wanted to do it no one wanted to be involved uh yeah so i don't 
I thought I was before when I knew this was coming. I thought I would be angry and that I would never want to come back. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, how could you come back to the place that just broke your heart? Like, that's that's hard. Uh, but now that I've been through it and I experienced that, I'm kind of... I don't feel ill will. So it's like if 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 an opportunity rolls up and there's something that I want, uh, I would... I would go back in a heartbeat. Like I, I, you know, I, I did like a big tweet rant earlier where I basically kind of hit a bunch of points to things I wanted to say. And uh, the first thing I pointed out was I would work for J. Allen Brack again in a heartbeat. Mm. Uh, okay. So if if there's something cool that comes up that I want to do, um, I would I would happily do it. Uh, I mentioned to. I mentioned to a couple of people, uh, some friends of mine who you know are still there that you know spots that I'm interested in, if they ever see pop up, I was like, please, I was like, I I'll gladly apply for it and go for it. And um, even when we were we were uh, talking to HR and doing the whole layoff process, they made it very clear that we were always welcome back. Um, they're giving us like a list of basically jobs that if you know we want to apply for, we we kind of get we kind of get a, a a bit a better chance i guess i would stay yeah yeah. doesn't mean they just laid you off so if you apply for a spot and they have to turn you down again that's uh <laughs> they're kind of in a hard time <laughs> doing that one. they exploit the emotions a little bit there uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but uh i mean there's, yeah. there's nothing there's nothing right now at least uh the downside for me at least because i've never been in a specific dev role is i kind of lay out to look for something a little entry mm-hmm. so if something pops up uh, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of projects and teams that I I definitely want to work on. Uh, yeah, I I absolutely want to go back. Uh, yeah, I even said that. Um, I hope that you know I, I I said it to Ian. I was like, I hope my path somehow leads me back to you know working for you again. Yeah, like that would that would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you know whether it's coming back and you know, working on the wow team, if, you know, something opens up or coming back and working on, you know, another team, I would, yeah. I would come back to Blizzard. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's a cool opportunity as well to, you know, if something doesn't come up with Blizzard now, uh, to go to another company, because a thing that happens in this industry is, uh, people stay at a single, single company for too long and they don't get a lot of experience. There's people who I know that have been at Blizzard for over a decade who ask the question, you know, when we have when we when we kind of have like a real chat, like a real talk, they they always talk about how should I have gone somewhere else at least for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it's they they kind of feel like they might have made a career mistake by not going somewhere else, which right. they shouldn't feel. They shouldn't feel that, but it's yeah. kind of that what if. That's just yeah, kind of people feel like that a little bit, like yeah. not not necessarily like. Uh, remorse, regret, those aren't the right words. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, I pointed out earlier that like yeah. it sucks that I can't feel rage. I was like, I woke up this morning, I was like, I want to break something. Yeah. But, but I, I'm not mad. You just like didn't have it in you. Well, it's not that I didn't have it in me. It's like I, yeah. there's no one I can be mad at. Yeah. There's, there's. This was just a thing that a thing that we knew was going to happen, knew it had to happen. Like it, it's unfortunate. It's it's awful. And uh, it's uh, I'm I'm kind of wondering. It's I'm still have that feeling. I'm like, what do I do next? It's what now? Right. I legitimately did not think I would ever not be Blizzard. Yeah. Well, I think whatever happens, I think I think whether whether you reapply for like a different job at Blizzard and you can get something like that. Which I, I think, I don't know, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think that as a fan of WoW, a fan of Classic, and, you know, being where I'm at, I, I, I know that I, I would love to see you with Blizzard still, you know? I, like, I mean, I think everybody, I think everybody sees how much work and effort that you put in and how much you, you really care, and I think if you can take that and, and put that in another role even, I, I think it's going to be the same thing. You're You're going to do a really good job at it, so... I mean, if, if that were to happen, I, I think a lot of people would, would love to see that. Uh, or, I mean, if, if you end up going to a different company, I, I would really, uh, I would be hard pressed uh, to see you have, have much difficulty getting another job, especially, I mean, like you were trending on Twitter in the entire state of California yesterday. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was weird. <laughs> that was probably um, a little bit of a surprise. Man, this is weird because 
uh, a chat's gonna get a kick out of this um mm -hmm. so okay I'll, I'll tell you the story of the of the tweet and what happened and i'll get to the point where where chat will probably kind of laugh at this and reddit will have a mm -hmm. fun time with this um so after after we got laid off and we were outside there was like a group of a group of people like standing by the door you know and there's a bunch of people crying and mm -hmm. uh it was it was like a real a real hard spot mm -hmm. and i knew i needed to tweet something just to get it done just to kind mm -hmm. of say it and kind of rip the band-aid off because i didn't want to sit on it didn't want to didn't want to not say anything because if i didn't say anything it was gonna i think it was gonna make it worse for me personally because mm -hmm. uh, i'm someone who has a problem with like bottling things up right uh, and if i did that for this i would have i probably would have snapped and i knew right. I, needed, I knew i needed to at least go that out so uh, right. i literally made that tweet closed my phone and put it in my pocket and didn't look at it uh mm -hmm. and you know was you know saying goodbyes to people and figuring you know figuring out who else was gone and you know Mm -hmm. all the tears being shed and all that <laughs> and, yeah uh, a friend of mine who works on the uh there's a team called the BizOps team uh, business operations for world of warcraft who mm -hmm. i love that team dearly um they're some of the best mentors i i i've had at least that i didn't work with that's that's the weird uh, that's the cool thing is i didn't specifically work for them even though i worked for them organizationally i didn't work with them on like projects uh because it's kind of it's kind of weird to describe org chart how everything works uh but mm -hmm. it, there's a reason there was a there was a layoff this org chart wouldn't make sense if i explained it and it's gonna get fixed i hope uh <laughs> right and they were they were great they were always giving me advice and mentoring and one of them came down and and uh just kind of sat and, and just cried with me for a little bit and she told me that i needed to look at twitter uh and this had been like an hour i think after i made that tweet and i didn't want to uh and she said no no you you really need to look at it you really need to look at it and i opened it mm. up and i my, i could my phone wouldn't stop um i kept getting so many message messages and so many messages and i just i could not keep up i it was it was too much and it was it was very touching because mm -hmm. and i said this i said this before it's like you 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 forget you forget that the numbers that you deal with on a day-to-day -day place it, day-to-day -day basis is 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 human that you mm -hmm. you're involved with something that touches them and to see all the players and and like the the blizzard community kind of rally I, around you a little bit kind of rally rally around like the worst moment of my life uh -huh. that that felt so good like that i i did not i did not even re I, I never thought that that would happen never thought that it would be that big and uh I just kind of sat there and read through a bunch of them and just kind of kept crying. And then uh, she said, you need to look at Reddit too. To which I responded with, I don't want to look at Reddit. It's probably a shit show right now. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Reddit, uh, I know how Reddit, I know how Reddit can be. Uh, and I pulled up, I pulled it up on Reddit and it was already the top post on our subreddit. And it yeah. was, it was full of people saying such nice things about me. And then the classic wow was the same thing. Yeah, I, I never imagined that. I never imagined that at all. Um, and to the point where I actually cried over redditors saying nice things about me. Yeah, like who cries over Reddit? Other than <laughs> in a good way, I uh, should say. Well, who other other than Reddit? redditors, other than yeah. redditors who cries over Reddit. Who cries over Reddit in a good way? <laughs> I I was touched, and it was it was awesome. Uh, and then uh someone on the dev team actually sent me a screenshot and showed me that the uh, r slash wow post was number four on r slash all mm -hmm. on the front page of reddit was my tweet like and it was just full of people just supporting me yeah and saying nice no. things like that was it was wonderful yeah I, I think i think the support has been has been really really awesome to see um because a lot of times like it's it seems like a thankless job right uh, and, and I mean, it kind of is a thankless job, right? You don't you don't realize like how how many people uh, appreciate what you do, and a lot of times on the flip side of things, people don't like know what they have till it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like I mean, I, I pulled up like this is one of the highest upvoted things on the subreddit, I think, on the classic subreddit, um, like overall, I'm pretty sure, but like this week for sure, it was the top highest upvoted thing, and 
you know, people people were talking. They were saying a lot of really nice things about you. Um, you know, you going on tour with Rise Against, and there's nothing more vanilla y than Rise Against. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fun. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I think uh, I think the support, just just seeing how many people have been supportive of you, and I mean, you're like even your like Twitter following has like over doubled. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you guys want. Pretty- yeah, that that is wild. If you guys want to follow uh, Yithesons on Twitter, it's at Caden House. Here, I'll go ahead and link it. I think I gained something like twenty eight hundred followers in under ten hours. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys want to go give, uh, if you guys want to go uh, ride ride the train, you can uh, <laughs> you can go follow him there. Twitter dot com slash Caden House, and even your dude, your Twitch, even. I honestly haven't looked at that. Uh, yeah, how many, know, how many I, followers do you think you're at? I, I gotta hide it. How many followers do you think you're at? Uh, last I checked, I was at like a uh, hundred and twenty or something because I think I'm not super active on it. It's it's something yeah. I'm, I'm I'm terrible at because I just I'm not consistent enough. But it's like I was at like a hundred and twenty ish. Yeah, there's thirteen hundred. Jesus, thirteen hundred. Yeah, there you go. Thirteen hundred follows on Twitter or on Twitch. Excuse me. I know that's like so, nothing, yeah. nothing for your 83k, but well, that's pretty good for that's a lot of growth per stream. Whenever you haven't streamed at all, and <laughs> <laughs> you've gone up, you've gone up 1,200 follows. Yeah, guys, shoot, shoot Sakara follow right there. It's in chat right now. I'll link it again. Shoot, yeah, this is a follow. Uh, I'm telling you, dude, you should you should stream like here here in the meantime while you're looking, have some fun with it, and good. Thanks, McConnell. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you should. I think you should stream. I think I think that'd be good. Um, yeah, I've, I mean, I've done a couple a couple of streams with you, and it's mm-hmm. yeah. I I mean, I probably will. It's just I just gotta work up the motivation to do something. Uh, mm-hmm. At least with this, this is kind of like therapeutic for me because uh, I was talking. To you, I mean, I was talking to you this morning about it, and yeah, a little bit. I, I was talking. I was like, I think I was like, I just need to talk. I just need to to talk about it, and I think it's gonna make me feel better. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of times and, and it's, it's easy to, and, and I've, I've done this too, right. Where like a lot of times it's like, Oh, like be like the tough guy. And like, you don't want to say anything. Um, but it's, it's nice to just like get to like air things out and, and just get to talk about it. And, uh, yeah, in a sense, like, cause I mean, it, it's not like you can go and like, you just sit there and like talk to the wall, like just to have people like, you know, people are out there like listening to you and, uh, you, you feel like your your voice is being heard. It kind of helps a lot, you know, not just to hear your own voice, but to um, but to but to know that other people are like, yeah, like you know, I, I see what you're saying, and like I, I feel you, you know. Oh, what's that? That was loud. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I have my OBS open. That's why. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! You're getting notifications. Yeah, I had my OBS open. That notification just like scared the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, the t- the Twitch Prime that you got from yeah. uh, Catastrophe. <laughs> hey, there cat. you go, dude. There's a there's a uh, there's a uh, Twitch Prime right there. Any primers? <laughs> yeah, no. So um, so yeah, I think. Uh, wait, what is this? That's what. McConnell says if Yithesons plays Apex with S Fand, I'll play too. Oh, McConnell, you want to play? Like we can totally play Apex. I've never played a game with you. I don't think. We've chatted a bunch of times. But I don't think we've ever actually played anything. Yeah, I think uh, I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, Pog, you. It's happening. <laughs> there you go. There it is, dude. Look at all the Pogs. Look at that, dude. We could totally do it here in a little bit. Absolutely. Mc- McConnell, here it is, dude. Hopefully you're better than I am. I'm awful at shooters. <laughs> <laughs> I've played a, I've played a bunch of games of like Blackout and PUBG with with you uh, off stream, and I'm bad. <laughs> I'm so bad. Uh, well, I mean, I think it's just because we've been playing WoW so long. You know what's funny that I, I I do whenever I play shooters, I I tip my crosshair down, and I think it's because whenever I play WoW, I ha- I, I have the camera tilted down. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I think the camera the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so so I point my crosshair down like this when it should be up like pointing at their heads. I think I think my mentality when I do that is I'm think I'm trying to look for feet and if I look for the feet I'll hear the feet. It's probably yeah. like the most backwards thing ever but like for some <laughs> reason that makes sense in my brain when I'm playing it cuz that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically I play shooters like a Brett Paladin. That's that's what I'm trying to say here. I'm awful. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes, dude. That's pretty much how it goes. So uh, what, McConnell, what's it going to be? 
We gotta we gotta have three rep palants playing Apex. I think that'd be good. Look at his Twitch. Dude, cheese puff with five gifted subs. Yeah, this ends five. Look at oh, this, dude. Damn. Yeah, I would keep your OBS closed if I were you, because uh if I mean you might not be able to hear a thing while we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing I closed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's seriously it's awesome. Wait, McConnell yeah. debated everybody? Uh, dude, twenty gifted subs from holy McConnell. Shit. Dude. There you go, dude. Someone banned McConnell for chat spam. <laughs> yeah. McConnell's spamming, dude. What the heck? <laughs> dude, uh, McConnell McConnell gifted Cheese Puff before Cheese Puff had a chance to sub on his own, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, man. That's cool. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. That's like seriously, like the reaction to everything has been incredible. Like I, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of cool. You spend your, you spend your whole life investing mm -hmm. into like this community just as an individual, like, cause that's all I ever did was play this game. And to get, to get this kind of love back is from, from players. That's the yeah. players who, who were me. Like, that's the cool thing is that, you know, if, you know, wow, keeps going for, you know, decades more to come. Like there are people in this chat that could do what I did. Like that's, that's like the coolest thing to me is that someone might someone might do file like do the same thing because yeah. I mean, well, I've been going for this so long already. Like, why not keep going? Like, like I could see that happening. Like, I even yeah. I even had an I had an interaction with 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 uh, Chris Metzen that was really cool, mm -hmm. where I had said that uh, I think I tweeted at him. I was like, it's people like you that 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 inspired me to come to blizzard and to kind yeah. of chase this weird this weird industry that is the most rewarding what can be the most brutal but you still keep doing it anyway because the highs are way better than the lows yeah yeah and uh that was really cool i got the, i got the chance to meet chris metzen at blizzcon this past year um when we we brought him onto the q a uh I was kind of his bodyguard, which is funny enough. You've seen me. I was basically a bodyguard for Chris Metzen. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm not intimidating whatsoever. And uh, uh, I was guarding him and hiding him from people in the uh, in uh, that were sitting down watching the Q&A. Yeah. And he 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 had saw me and know and know that he knew that he didn't know me. Uh, and he's introduced yeah. himself. He's, hey, I'm man, gonna, I'm, I got to load up a picture of you, by the way. Yeah. So they, yeah, they load have up some, a picture of me. Look how skinny yeah. I am. Uh, so they, so they have context. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he know he knew that he didn't recognize me, and so he actually had introduced himself to me. Uh, he's like, "Hey, man, I'm Chris." Like, uh, yeah. here's here's the, here's the bodyguard. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> Uh, well, hopefully, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, there's not too many. Uh, <laughs> the, it's not. It's not too big of a threat at uh, at BlizzCon. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> it is me. <laughs> and there's a stand-in Chris Metzen. <laughs> uh, there it is. Uh, Relevant picture. Look at that. Yeah. But uh, uh, it was really cool. He uh, he introduced himself and asked what all I did, and you know was excited when I told him that I was, I was, you know, helping out the, the, the wow team. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, proceeded to talk you know so highly of them and was, you know, had so many nice things to say and was so encouraging. Uh, that was like a good experience. I've had that with all of like the old school blizzard folk. All yeah. These, all these old school, like blizzard legend that you run into that, you kind of hope would be like a were are cool in real life, but turns out they are extremely cool in real life. And you're kind of like, I don't know if this is actually a human being. Like you, this how are you actually this person? Yeah, uh, I had that with like Samwise. Samwise gave me a drunken pep talk at the first BlizzCon or first BlizzCon I ever went to as a game at. Yeah, like what do you say? He uh, can you say can you say what he said? <laughs> yeah, I can say what he said. Yeah. He basically oh, yeah. had said that. Uh, he's like, it's good on you, man, that you're, uh, you're, you made it as a game master and you're coming out here. He's like, someone who's able to accomplish that is going to do big things for this, this company. And he's like, and it makes me happy that one day I'll retire and there's going to be people like you that are building the foundation to come after me. Uh -huh. And 
he just said, keep your head up, keep working hard that you're like you're already doing. He's like, and you're probably going to be my bo- be a, a boss of someone like me someday. And he told me that his boss actually was a game master at one point. Yeah, he, there you go. He told me that his boss literally started in customer service. Which is crazy that, you know, someone like Samwise would have would have a boss that was in CS. Like you just you kind of don't think because you just associate him as this larger than life person. Yeah, that's awesome. But man, that's I so, do, do a cool thing though. I do want to share is that uh, my uh, one thing that I got to do a lot was when I found out about certain things that I wanted to get the WoW team to work on or fix. Mm-hmm. Um, say if like something was broken or someone was having an issue with something. Uh, when I found out about those things, I got to kind of kind of chase those to get to get fixed i didn't do the manual work of course because you know i'm not i'm not a programmer not not a designer i don't know how to fix those problems mm-hmm. but i i make sure that the problem gets to them so that it can be fixed uh the the last thing that i got to chase to get fixed was uh you'll see it in the hotfix notes i think where there was a play there was a player in my guild and then another player who messaged me about this uh that mentioned that there's a mechanic on Jade Fire Masters where it's called Seven Sided Strike, and it's yeah. hard. It's hard to see if you're colorblind. Uh, and I didn't. I never realized that. It's hard. It's very, very hard to see when you're colorblind. Right. So yeah, I, 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 I have some colorblindness myself, just a little bit. Yeah, and so I, I mentioned it to. I sent it straight over to the lead encounter designer and said, "Hey, here's the situation. Here's what it. Here's what it's doing. Here's what it looks like." Um, this is what someone in my guild noticed, and this is also some someone else said. Like, here's what here's what this is actually causing. Like, this this mechanic is making it very hard for people to do if they're if they're even slightly colorblind. Uh, to which you know the WoW team is great about this. If you come up to them with an accessibility thing, they jump on it as fast as possible mm-hmm. because you know it's it's a legitimate concern that some player is unable to play the game, and it's not their fault. It is something entirely right. due to something that's not a like an accessibility thing. issue. Yeah, it's it's like an accessibility issue, and it's not. It's it's unfortunate. So it's like you want to get those fixed ASAP because more players could run into that, and you don't want that to happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was the the last thing I got to see get hotfixed before my email was turned off. Uh, when they deactivated your e- deactivated your email, you your password resets. And, right. Uh, so that was the last email you got was you, yeah. you you knew that the thing that you like the last thing that you requested got hot fixed basically yeah. the, the the last thing that I had sent along I saw the hot fix that it was implemented into the into the live build uh, and so I'm pretty proud that the last thing that I got to get fixed was was something, something that was gonna help out a lot of people something that was gonna help out you know, not necessarily a lot of people because it's I mean colorblindness that specific type is pretty rare but I mean to those players it 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 means the world because right. they, because the two people who I pushed for that to get fixed for sent me like the nicest messages uh, with right. a link to the hotfix snip like that. There you go, dude. That felt good. Like that's even though I, I even though I, I know it's it's I didn't do the work for it specifically. I I just made sure the people who do do the work correct do the work for it. You know that they could do it. Like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna miss that. I, I'm gonna really miss that. Yeah. I, I think I think doing something. I think being able to do something and knowing that your work, whatever that you're that you're trying to accomplish, makes a direct impact. Uh, either whether it's on the game or whether it's for the people playing the game. I think that's something that's really really rewarding. And uh, I think I think you should know that a lot of people feel that you did make a really big impact. Um, whether whether it was in the community or uh, even if it's stuff that like you know it's behind the scenes, but I know for me personally, like, I mean, I'll I'll tell I'll tell you guys in chat, like, <laughs> and you know, Kaden, you know, <laughs> if I was at BlizzCon and I saw like the smallest thing wrong with the classic demo, I'd be like, Kaden, like, what's going on? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, why is there sharding? What's happening? Like, <laughs> freaking out. No, I literally, like, you remember this. I took I, I off do. my headphones, I got off the thing, and I was like, what is, like, why is there sharding? I was like, yeah, I was having a meltdown. 
and you're like, hey, it's just like a temporary thing. They just did it for this build. Like it's, you know, they haven't come up with a final solution. The look on um, your face of panic was great. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah. that was that was funny. That was really really funny. And even afterwards, like the second year you to shut your stream off, you were like, let's. We need to talk. We need to talk right now. It's like it's, yeah. I was like, dude, it's a temporary thing. <laughs> like it was just for that demo. Yeah. We had to do it. We had to do it for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, no, it was uh, a, it was a good time. BlizzCon was a really good time and and I and I know like I I appreciate like cuz cuz I I take like a lot of like what I think and again and I, I've told you this before like I think this it seems like the majority of people feel this way. Um uh, and and like this is what you guys are doing now. So like I uh I I really do appreciate you and and uh just like whenever I had like a concern or something that I like I wanted to like Hey, like this is how some like this is how people feel about classic. This is how I feel about classic. You know, whether it was like the the four stages of content release, and it's like who knows like what's actually going to happen at the end of the day. But like uh, knowing yeah. that those concerns are being heard like means a lot to to me and uh, a lot of people in the classic community and in the WoW community in general too. So yeah, Pepe laugh, guys. I know Pepe laugh. Thank um, you. <clears throat> yeah. No, Seriously. I think. Uh, do you do you have do you have stream labels uh, installed right now? Uh, I think so. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't have it up, but I can pull it up. Uh, yeah, I think you should. Oh wait, pull I have it up. stream stream labs OBS. I don't think I've. Where's? I'm mm, bad okay. at this. I'm bad at this. Yeah, I mean, don't worry about it. Maybe you should just. You should probably just. Oh wait, check it I later. do have stream labels. I do have stream labels. I can open this. But yeah. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, I think McConnell needs to download Apex, and I think all three of us should play some Apex together. Yeah, absolutely, man. I I am totally down. Like, mm -hmm. I've I've enjoyed very like. There's a couple of people who, you know, I I, I of course enjoy and and like value a lot of people that I got to talk to and got to know. Uh, and there's a couple that really really stand out, and it's it's folks like you, uh, like McConnell, even though it's McConnell sometimes. Uh, <laughs> that was. You know, there's a lot of folks that's really, really cool. Like, I mean, even Quissy. Like, Quissy was was awesome to get to know and to have her out at BlizzCon. Like, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so cool to know that, that a lot of the people that, you know, because I'm a big WoW fan. Like, I've always been yeah. a WoW fanboy. And so all the people who make content for a while, like, to the fact that I professionally worked with them is the coolest thing in the world to me. Like, mm -hmm. the first time I ever got, like, an email from Vajira, or I talked yeah. to Vajira through like an email. I was like, "What? That's that's pretty <laughs> cool. That's pretty cool." And then, uh, especially because you guys take the time to, you know, it's it is kind of like a professional work relationship. But you guys take the time to actually like to talk and get to know us. Like it's because you guys want to work with us. You want to know us. Like the, it's it feels good. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and even with like uh, uh, with Ginny, like. Warcraft Jen, like that was, that was cool. That anytime we went somewhere, she would always, she would always, if she saw me come up and say hi and ask how everything's going, and it's it's wonderful. Yeah, uh, there's so many people like that that I can't believe that I got to work with. Like that's, and I hope that you know if, you know, it come I come back to Blizzard, I get to do that again. Like, even working with Wowhead, like Wowhead was it, it, incredible. Like. Mm -hmm. To be a to be a kid growing up playing WoW and using Thoughtbot, and then going to WoWhead all the time, same with like MMO Champ, like going right. to all these fan sites and then getting to meet the people that make these fan sites run, and who put on these events at you know, at BlizzCon, like it. That's it's priceless. It's it's seriously priceless. Yeah. And it's like, God, like it's really. Yeah. It's, well, and that, that means a lot to me too, man. Like, I mean, just like to know, like, like I said, it kind of goes back to earlier, like, uh, just knowing that, you know, whether it's you or like Omar or Brian or, or whoever, like they, they see our content and, uh, you know, whether it's through you or some other means, like knowing that like our, our voice is heard and, uh, yeah. that it's not like, cause sometimes, like I said, sometimes it feels like people feel like they're out in the dark, but knowing that like our voice is heard knowing that like, Hey, whenever we're talking about something, we're concerned about something that people are like genuinely, uh, 
genuinely supportive of us and and they they're like oh they they want to see us do do content and be like okay well like let's take this into consideration mm-hmm. um yeah and and that's that's the big thing i think i think you being there was a uh, was a big part of that yeah exactly like mcconnell said and yeah i always yeah, wanted I'll... to make sure that no matter what it was even if it was something that couldn't be done that whatever mm-hmm. you guys were saying was validated like mm-hmm. and if i couldn't if if you know if i could say anything at all i would try to give you honest answers like mm-hmm. as much as i could a lot of times you can't uh yeah and, and that's just part of it right it, yeah it's the unfortunate part of it but like i always wanted to make sure that anyone who was coming to me or tagging me with something felt validated because i i, rem- I remember being that player i still am that player um mm-hmm my different you know working at the company my different validation was being able to talk to uh the people who make whatever it is that you know i want to talk to about like if i had if i had a you know a, a, a class question like i would i could i would make sure that i would go to the class team and the cool thing is is they that team is so excited to get feedback yeah like i i wish people and players like could grasp how excited they are to get actionable real feedback uh not to say that my feedback is is better but if i could take stuff that you guys said and then turn it into something i could actually tell them it it, they get so excited like because that's that's something real that they can work with uh and there was so much of that like if you know say the monk discord yeah those guys are insane the stuff the 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 detail that they have that class mapped out and the math, like the, the math behind it all, it's incredible. Uh, if they right. point something out, I could take it over to the person who works on Windwalkers, and get it looked at. If it was a tier set, like I can go right to the person who manages the tier set or in charge of the, like the tier sets when we were still in Legion, like I could get it resolved quickly. Any sort of bugs with the Azerite, like, like they were so excited to hear me to hear me bring stuff to mm-hmm. them because it's very hard sometimes for them to for them to hear stuff from you guys because it's there's just so much noise uh mm-hmm. that's the well, coolest like... that's the coolest like validation of that job is there's so much noise all the time it's very very hard for them to know what is what is valuable and what isn't because it's mm-hmm. just they're just flooded uh, I'm sorry. I'm getting like real emotional on that one because that's like what I got. That's my favorite part of my job was yeah. That that's yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, it was to 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 find as much as I could from you guys and get it to the right people who could uh, who could handle that. And you know, it's gonna happen. It's still gonna happen. Uh, you may not see someone be as vocal about it. Uh, that's still going to happen. There's still CMs there that are going to be trying to, you know, handle everything. Like, uh, it's still, it's still going to keep going on. Mm-hmm. It's just, I'm going to miss being the one that did. That. Yeah. And, and we, we're going to miss you too, man. Like, uh, like I said, I mean, I, I think you're, you're, you're a big part of it to us too. I mean, and you're still going to be a big part of it. I mean, like the, the whole, everything that's happened from now, from the classic news, to, I mean, pretty much this point that we're at now where, you know, we might be on the cusp of a beta, alpha, whatever, who knows? Uh, I mean, that's, you, you've still been a huge part of it to us and you're going to continue to be a huge part of it. So. Yeah. Like I, I mean, oh shit. Like I said, like I was a part of the community before I was a, before I worked at Blizzard. I mean, still be a part of it afterwards. I mean, it might take me a while to, to be able to play any of the games because it's, it's a little heartbreaking. Like I haven't, I haven't launched the launcher since or opened the launcher since I got since I got home. Uh, yeah, can't do it. Uh, I'll eventually get back into it and I'll be a regular mm-hmm. player again. But uh, I, I was a player. I was a you know a community member before. I'll, I'm going to be a community community member again. And so I still want to be involved with everything. So, like I'll still be around. And I luckily I have I still have tons of friends on like the dev team and. If I find anything or like, I, I know that if I find anything that's like, ex, you know, extremely critical, I can get it to the right people to make sure that they, they know something needs to, something needs to be done or they need to be aware of something. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and yeah, and that, like I said before, like I mean, that's that's what's so like that's what's so valuable to to us, like as part of the community. I mean, that's that's what means so much to us. <clears throat> yeah, I, I also had Jay the Bard. Jay the Bard mentioned that uh, you know he he was uh, he's hoping for the best for you too. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you got a chance to talk to him, but yeah, he said he was hoping for the best for you. And yeah, I I feel like I kept I he always run into Jay at BlizzCon. Uh, yeah, <laughs> every all all over the place. Uh, Jay's great. He's, mm -hmm. he's wonderful. Uh, this sucks. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, like, you know, just w whether or not it's part of your title, whether or not it's you being there or you being elsewhere, like, like I said before, like, you're you're still a part of the community to so many people. And, and I, I think that a lot of people are going to have your back. Uh, and actually, you know what? I, I think... Uh, Appreciate it. I think you should go go up to your uh you should go check out that uh your stream labels. You should probably check your notifications or, or maybe look at your Twitch dashboard. That's probably what you should look at. Uh one. Let me see if I can find it. Uh oh. Holy shit. <laughs> what is what is that number? What is that sub count? The the uh, sub points. Uh it's at two hundred and four. 204 subs. There you go, dude. Pretty, pretty good for not streaming. <laughs> good God, man. Pretty good, dude. Pretty That's good for insane. not streaming. Yeah, yeah. There's dude, this on Switch cry. channel. I'm gonna fucking cry, dude. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Yeah, I haven't refreshed the page in a while. Let's see. What are you? Man. Okay, 1,600 followers. There you go. I'm literally gonna fucking cry. Like, <laughs> I feel I man, it's I feel bad that not. It's really cool. Like, really, it's really awesome. But like, mm -hmm. I feel bad for all of the. There's a lot of people that got you know their hearts broken that. Mm -hmm. Are not getting the reception that I got, like, just because you know I happen to talk to players more. Yeah, you just have to be more involved in the community or more public. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's a uh, that's a hard one. Oh, shit! I was watering up. I thought I was done crying. God. Yeah. Well, dude, you, I mean, like I said before, like you mean a lot to the community and, and even for me, like personally, like I, I like, I mean, who, who knows? Like I, I might've just been like kind of dicking around and like, just keep getting banned over and over again and, and open up a Patreon and just try and like hide, you know, like if it wasn't yeah. for you reaching out to me, like uh, I, I would be in a, I could be in a totally different situation for all I know. I, I'm not sure. Right. No, um, you're no, seriously, you're the way you handled everything uh, and the way that the way everything went down at least for you know how we got to know each other and how receptive you were and how successful you were after like you know us kind of just laying out like you know this is if this is you know this, this is the rules this is kind of how this works and like you made my job a lot easier uh i'm, I'm not even kidding when it comes to streamers and influencers because and, and, and all the content creators, because it, for anyone that ever was viewed in a light that was like if they had a preconceived notion kind of, you know, of, you know, a past experience, you know, if someone was, you know, uh, had been suspended a bunch of times or, you know, happened to have one bad encounter with a dev and, you know, uh, you know, your exam, you, you were literally were an example that made mine and Rob's job a lot easier that helped, yeah. helped us do a lot of stuff that we wanted to do. Uh, the way you handled it was great. Not a lot of, I can't literally can't think of any other content creators who legitimately got striked and pretty much banned and came and, 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 and learned from it and came back and are so successful now. Like that's, that's a rare one. That's, that doesn't happen very often, and especially that you you worked with us on it, that made it that made it very easy. 
and mm-hmm. that it made our lives very very easy so like whenever you know something like blizzcon rolls around and uh we want to you know die on the hill to say you know we want to represent the people that we want to represent this year because it's always a hard that's a hard process uh to decide who or to try and figure out who who streams at blizzcon uh because there's you know yeah. there's so, it's so hard for it to get the slots and they're so they're so coveted and say if we want to plant our flag and be like you know you deserve one uh when you do stuff like that 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 makes it easier for easy for you know higher ups at a company to be like let's work with them so when yeah. we pitch it they're like and we give the backstory they'll be like let's let's give them a shot like that's that's a big one yeah yeah i mean that 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 really means a lot to me it really does i mean i i, I always had a i had a football coach in high school who he he always said good things happen to people who work hard and do things right. And I think that that's something that, that I try and uphold, you know, being a paladin, a righteous paladin, of course I'm going to try and uphold that. <laughs> but I, I think, I think for sure that, uh, uh, I think, I think you're a really, really great example of that too. And I think that, like I said, whether, whether it's back at blizzard applying for one of these other jobs or whether it's another company that comes in, uh, I think I think for sure, uh, good things are gonna happen. Thank you. Like that, mm-hmm. seriously, that means that means that means a lot. Not not a lot of people get this kind of response, and I I'm very I'm seriously extremely humbled. Like it's 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 touching. Mm-hmm. Like, man, you make me cry again. Uh, <laughs> I was doing good. I thought I was covered. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's good, dude. It's good. It's a good time. Like, oh. it definitely doesn't feel like the end, but it definitely feels like a big pause button on, you know, Blizzard. Yeah. And you know, like I, as unfortunate as the whole thing is, you know, I wanna, I wanna at least like make sure that. I know it's super negative. Like a lot of people. A lot of people lost their job. There's no diminishing that, you know, oh, 800 something people legitimately lost their job. Mm. And that is something you cannot, you cannot undersell ever. But mm-hmm. I genuinely believe that this was something Blizzard needed to go through. Mm. Uh, I firmly believe that it, it, it was going to happen. It needed to happen. And it's a chance for Blizzard to do better. Um, no one wanted to do it. No one wanted to make that decision. And I, I wholeheartedly believe that it's a chance for things to things to kind of fix themselves. I don't want to like go down a rabbit hole of like things that things that uh you know that we think were problems, but it's a chance for a reset button to fi- to fix it. And I genuinely right. hope I genuinely hope that happens. Like I, I told all the people that are still there, that yeah, you know, it's pretty much as I was leaving. I told them I was like, you, you're still here. You have an opportunity to fix this thing that we love. Uh, and I hope anyone at Blizzard still is 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 hearing this. Like you have an, you're still there. You have an opportunity to make that company as great as we all want it to. Be. It needed to happen, and it there was nothing there was nothing we could do to stop it. Hmm. Uh, please take the opportunity to make Blizzard as fantastic as we want it to be, as we all like have it in our minds that it is. Because a lot of us do want to come back. Yeah, there's a. I, I mean, I I don't blame people who if if they don't want to come back, but there's quite a few of us that you know they would love to return to the Blizzard that they love. Like, yeah, I think I think a lot of people would like to see that. Yeah, I know people at leadership heard that too. I be- I still believe in them. I legitimately do. Mm-hmm. Uh, even when even when Jab was promoted to president, I told everyone I was like, "This is a good thing," because he's one of us. And if you're a WoW fan, you have to 
you have to love that fact because he's been at WoW for so he's been on WoW for so long. Like he's a WoW player. He he he's he's one of us. We you know, a lot of people unfortunately don't have that personal relationship, but he's one of us. Uh, mm-hmm. I would challenge people to find a truly negative experience, uh, a truly negative experience from a Blizzard employee about about him. Uh, Jab is an extremely nice person, and he cares mm-hmm. about Blizzard. He he really cares about Blizzard employees. Mm-hmm. Like, but I mean. Uh, I just, I, I, I just hope, I just hope it was for, it's for the, it's, it's for the best. Like a good, a good stuff comes out of it. Otherwise, this was all for nothing. Right. Yeah, and I think, I think that's what we all hope too. I, I think that's what we all hope too. Cause, and this is like what I, what I've said before. I mean, there's, there's been people who, like they, they play WoW. They used to play WoW, and we've talked about this before, where like you know. Somebody will come up to you and you know, oh, I work for Blizzard. I work on the WoW team. And like, oh yeah, that that used to be a good game. <laughs> and you're like, okay, dude. Like, I still work there. And like for me, like, yeah. And I, sometimes uh, people like, are saying it to the people who are responsible for the certain features that they thought were better than. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah, that's not cool. I, that's yeah, really not cool. Yeah, and like that's just like okay, like seriously. But I, I think I think to for people to like want like WoW or Blizzard or any any company or anything that they're a fan of to uh, be bad is just kind of not kind of it's completely misguided, right? You shouldn't want anything to be bad. I think anytime people have criticism or people are concerned or upset about something, it, it I mean, there's a difference, right? The difference between hating and there's a difference between it coming from. Uh, a place of love and a place of caring, right? Like you legitimately want WoW to be good, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I think I think that's big time, you know. Yeah, like I like I've always told everyone. I've even you know, I've said this to you know, McConnell so many times where it's, I have said that no matter what you lace your feedback in, mm-hmm. uh, no matter like what other wor- like verbiage you use or stuff that you say, like at the core of it, you are expressing your, what you feel is a problem to you. And at the end of the day, you care about WoW as much as the next person, and you want to see it be better. Mm-hmm. That is at the core of it all. No matter what, if no matter what toxic forum posts you read of how they are, you know, incredibly ripping it apart. At the core, they want WoW to be as good as they believe it can be. Uh, and sure. and yeah. That's that's the that's like the big point of it all. It's everyone mm-hmm. who's ever said everyone who's ever said any sort of feedback about WoW has played the game, loves the game, and wants to play the game again if they're not playing it. Because they why would they waste their time to tell you? Mm-hmm. Why why would they bother? For sure. They would they wouldn't get they just wouldn't care anymore. They would go on to something else. But the fact yeah. that they're taking the time to tell you, uh the game means something to them. I've had so many conversations with people like that where they've they've sent me something horribly 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 negative, mm-hmm. uh, and they think that I won't read it or respond to them, and I start talking to them, I'll respond back, and try to be like, "What is the actual thing you're trying to say here?" I was like, "I'm you, you have my attention. Like I'm reading this. What is it you are actually saying?" Like. And yeah. it's almost it's every single time it's I used to play this game like I used to love this game and I'm like well tell us exactly what it is that you have a problem with like tell us exactly what it is because mm-hmm. like if someone says that I can if I run into Ian and I have a conversation with Ian I can mention that and I guarantee you he understands like I told I told Asmongold this and uh uh, he, he talked about it on stream a couple of times. Uh, when Asmongold made his big state of BFA, um, his big state of BFA video, um, I had like, I went, actually went over to Lord to talk to him about that video. And as we were talking about it, Ian strolled in to talk to us about it. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, well, I say us, but he was probably coming in to talk to Lore, but I just happened to be there too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had a fairly long conversation about it. And even though that is an hour, an, like a, I think it's a 45 minute long video of of pretty hard criticism about the game. Like every single yeah. bit of it is is someone pouring their heart out about yeah what the game meant to them. And they want someone else to experience that. They want to experience that again. And they want someone else to have that same feeling too. Yeah. I think, and, and I think that's the big thing, right? I think that's the big thing is uh, like when it, it comes from a place of passion, you know, and, and whether, whether it's Hasman or um, so many people, right? I think, uh, I think it does come from a place of passion and or I know it comes from a place of passion and it's, it's, uh, it's cool to see uh, when, like the the really the target audience, like sure, like there's a lot of people who view it and like the the criticism or the the suggestions or whatever it resonates with a lot of people. But in reality, the target audience is is Blizzard, right? Mm -hmm. And it's cool to see that it's actually reaching the the audience that it's intended for. I, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the, the a thing that people should realize is when it comes to game design is. <clears throat> the people who are working on it and designing the games, they're designing stuff that they think is fun, that they that they are incredibly motivated to create. So at at the core of it all at the core of it, they're designing it for for themselves and on top of it, people who are also playing the game. Like they're working their hearts are in what they think is fun and what they think players will think is fun. Sometimes mm -hmm. those don't line up, but and things need to be adjusted. Like that's happened every expansion. Sometimes it just it's it's just one of those things. But at the core, it's always the same. It's always that center philosophy of they hundred percent believe that it's it's fun. It's not it's not being done just to try and throw something in the game. It's because it's a dev's heart is being poured into that. Mm hmm. Like, yeah. I think, um, you know what I think we should pour our heart into right now is, uh, I think playing a little bit of Apex would be good. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe yeah. Maybe get McConnell involved? Yeah, we can do that. It's, uh, do we want to do, like, uh, do you have, like, any, like, I know it's like us just kind of chatting. Do you have like any like questions or anything? Or I don't. I kind of don't know what else to talk about about it because it's it's just me kind of. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think. Sad. Yeah, I mean, uh, like like I said, like it's just. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's clear, right? I think it's been made clear at this point, like how much people really appreciate you and everything you've done, and uh, like how how big a part of this you are to pretty much anybody, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Here's a quote. Hey, here's something good. People want to know what's what's your funniest or best GM story that you have. Oh, I okay. I got two. Uh, two that have stuck with me forever. I think I told you the story of one. Did I, did I tell you the Dalaran story? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I've, all right, I've got two GM stories because when you're in, when you're a game master, you see a lot of funny stuff. <laughs> a uh -huh. lot of funny stuff with the game. Um, uh, so I think it was the Legion pre-patch. It might've been the Legion pre-patch where Cadgar's servant was following people around. Right. And okay. he, and when you completed the quest line, he wouldn't, he wouldn't stop following you. <laughs> he just like, wouldn't, mm -hmm. he wouldn't keep up. He would, he would stay with you. He wouldn't go away. And, uh, right. the, the bug was for some reason, they just couldn't get him to stop chasing you. Uh, mm -hmm. And we were trying to figure out what was causing it. We were trying to figure out like what the f like we were playing with flagging to see if maybe we could point something out to like the QA guys to narrow it down to to get this thing fixed. And I was going through the quests like flagging some stuff as I was talking to. I had the dialogue open with Cadgar, and as I was using the GM commands to flag through the quest, this was when Dalaran was over the broken shore. <laughs> 
And if you okay. flag to the quest that you hit, when you hit a certain quest while you had the dialogue open with Cadgar, it triggers what's known as a world state in WoW, which what world states are is what we call phasing. Uh, world state is like the, te the tech term for it, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and when it tripped the world state, the server thinks that that Dalaran is not supposed to be where it is anymore. Okay. So Dalaran does not exist in Broken Shore anymore. Dalaran's back over Karazhan. Uh, oh. And, and when the server like realized, uh, and I'm probably technically explaining this wrong, so if anyone on the dev team like is making fun of me, I'm sorry. I was a game master, and I don't know what happened. <laughs> and from what I take it, you also don't know what happened either. <laughs> from the people that I've talked to about this, <laughs> we still don't know how this happened. Um, Dalaran disappeared. And everyone who was standing on the Legion Dalaran fell to their death. Just like, everybody at the same time? Everybody at the same time <laughs> fell to their death and died in fatigue water. That's insane, actually. And so I'm on a, I'm on a character flag with GM like flag. So I, I'm, I fly. I mean, I'm floating. And so I look down and I see all the, all the bodies just falling. And yeah. uh, when that happened, I, I stood up and I looked at my... Uh, my senior at the time, which is a supervisor for Game Masters, um, I looked at him and I was like, "It's like, hey man, um, uh, I have to tell you something, but I don't want to tell you it." To which his response was, "That's the worst thing you could ever say to a boss ever. It's the worst thing you ever say to a supervisor is, I'm afraid to tell you what I did." So, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. he's like, I talk, he's like, "What did you do?" Explain it now. Uh, and I ran through what yourself. happened. I ran through what happened. And then his follow-up, which still tickles me to this day, was, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sit back down. And we're going to pretend this never happened because neither of us know how to fix this. <laughs> Surely it's not actually gone and it will go back because we thought that's what would happen. And about um, two or three minutes later, players started ticketing in uh, on this on this server. <laughs> players started ticketing in, hey, and so there's this, when you're a game master, there's this global chat where uh, what's called a SLC uh, uh -huh. service level coordinators. They're basically watching all the incoming tickets to try to notice trends to try and help game masters with the queue. Uh, yeah. Because when something big happens, they they're there to kind of help stabilize it so the game masters don't get flooded. Okay. So when that they started seeing that happen, we get an update in this channel basically saying, Hey guys, uh Dalaran is gone on I think it was Hellscream. Hellscream or Dalaran or Garona, one of those three servers, I don't remember. Um they basically said, Hey guys, Dalaran is gone. We don't know where it went and we don't know how to get it back. Yeah. And then about a minute later there was another follow up of, Yes, we're serious. <laughs> <laughs> because people started messaging them, go, messaging them going, you're joking, right? And they're like, yes, we're serious. <laughs> and uh, they, what ended up happening was uh, they, they somehow managed to fix it and Dalaran came back. Yeah. Uh, but we still don't know how it, what caused it. At the time, we didn't know what caused it. Uh, and so another ticket came up mm -hmm. where this was the same thing again, another Cadgar servant. And so I was going through again and I was like, I don't know, I don't know uh, how I did this. But I need to make sure I can I know what caused this so I can tell other game masters not to trip this, so we aren't we aren't killing all the Dalarans. Uh, and I accidentally tripped it again. And <laughs> when I accidentally did it the second time, I stood up and looked, looked at my senior and I was like, I figured it out. I know what caused it. Yeah. And he was like, You did not. Please tell me you did not. I was like, I'm sorry. So. Uh, when I introduced myself to a couple people that I met on Team 2 who had heard of this happening... Oh, no. Okay. I introduced myself as, I'm the most murderous game master and, I guess, now community manager that's ever existed for a while. Oh, there you now. go. <laughs> and they were yeah, like, I'm you're the, the Dalaran I'm, guy. So, yes, I yeah, am. <laughs> I'm the guy who deleted Dalaran. <laughs> oh, dude. That's great. That's so freaking funny. Like, yeah, I, I can't even imagine how that happens. You just get, like, ported out in the middle of nowhere and just get killed. Yeah. Like, imagine so you're great. standing in Dalaran. Imagine you're looking at, like, a second monitor. And all of a sudden, Dalaran just falls. And you're falling. And you look up, and Dalaran's not there. <laughs> oh, that's great. And to this to this day, I we, 
I haven't figured out what caused that. I have not figured out what exactly caused that. Yeah. And well, at least it's fixed, right? Yeah, it, it's fixed. It won't happen yeah. again, but <laughs> I still don't really exactly know how I tripped that. And it was so funny to see the scramble of CS, and I was like, oh, no, I did this. <laughs> Wait, this is so this was in August 2016, right? Uh, I think so. I think it would have been August. There is a video with 180 views on it. You're kidding. That, uh, there is a video on it right now. Here, let me do. Let me let me uh, get rid of some stuff so people. Is can this, see this. real? Oh, I've been this, looking for videos of this. This is so I, good. I was wondering if someone ever recorded this. I okay, can't believe you found this. Let's see. Uh, who found this? Somebody linked this in chat. Who was it? Let me scroll up. It was uh, Ot Cosmic. Ot Cosmic found this. Oh okay. my god! I did this two years ago. Okay, okay, let's see. How did you find this? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna play it. So, I guess Dalaran just... Oh, there it is, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe this exists. Dude, they're just falling. This is every... I guess people are logging in or zoning in and they're just falling to their deaths? They are! <laughs> I can't believe this is re this exists. Dude, this is so funny. There's like people randomly like imagine logging off in Dalaran and you log on the next day, you're like getting ready to do some arenas, you're getting ready to go raid, you got your consumes, you got buffs, you got your stuff ready. You log in and you just fall to your death immediately. <laughs> I cannot believe someone actually found footage of this. This is incredible. Well, uh I wanted to come to Blizzard to leave a mark on WoW history, and someone actually recorded Here it. Here it is, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Dismounted? I... The guy randomly got dismounted? <laughs> I cannot believe this is real. I, I'm so shocked right now. <laughs> uh, uh. So I, I said I had two stories. <laughs> So that was that was one. Yeah. Uh, the other one was, um, <laughs> I was uh, I had a report of a of a bot once. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> I was I was you know following this character around basically doing this bot report because uh, I you know I was about to to, to suspend this account because clearly it was botting. And uh, what I didn't remember is so the way game master characters work and the game master accounts is you always want to log out on. The place that doesn't exist. Right. You always want to log out in a certain place where game masters live. Okay. You a know, certain island, maybe? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. That sounds like a place that has <laughs> textures that haven't been updated in years. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, if it's not updated, so it's not GM Resort. It's uh, it's another place. It's an older I, place. I don't know. Uh, well, anyway, this place, uh, it's important because it... It resets your flags uh, whenever you log in and log out. It it turns off. It turns on everything. So if you have to turn it off, you don't forget to turn it back on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I forgot to log out on one of the servers because on a game master account, you basically you have GM tunes on like every server that you just leave after you create them. So if you work on one server and you don't come back to it for like a month, you forgot what you did or where you're at. And uh, I came back to one that I forgotten that I had to disable all the flags. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was working on something in an, something in an instance I can't remember, and uh, when uh, when I was going to find to to basically you know stalk this bot because I was about to I was going to take care of it and I was making sure that at least it was a bot, um, I was following him around and I didn't know that it was in a, it was in a battleground and I didn't know that those flags were off because I didn't think they would be off, and okay. players were following me. They were following me around on my game master character, and it's it's so, under the name Yithisens. So if yeah. anyone ever finds it, you know that's me. Yeah. And, uh, they were following. And, it's, me. and it has the GM tag on your name. It has right? the GM tag. I'm in the robes and everything, and I'm level yeah. one, I'm level 100, but this is Legion, so everyone else is 110. Funny funny thing about game master clients is since they're not, it's not important for them to be level cap. Like it literally doesn't serve a purpose whatsoever. Uh, in the beginning of an expansion, game masters are always ten levels lower than players, just because they're the GM clients. Uh, it's not something they just update yet. It just it doesn't matter, so they don't they don't they don't mess with it. Right. And uh, 
I'm, you know, I'm standing in a battleground on a, I think I was on a, an Alliance Game Master tune. And I'm, you know, I'm sitting there watching this, what I'm thinking is a bot. And a Horde player, I think it was like an undead death knight, runs up and just one shots me. Just on a Game Master tune, everyone knows. Because you're, because you're, you're not immune. Like, I'm not, you, you're. I, yeah. I'm not immune. I'm not invisible. <laughs> everyone can see me. My uh, my GM flag is on. Dude, that is actually so funny. They you know, walk like, up and they dude. hit me. And so <sighs> I, I died and I instantly was one shot. And so my dead body is on there on the on the floor. But here's the thing. I was writing the report of this bot uh, for the ticket on another window. So I wasn't even looking at my main window because I didn't think this was happening. And uh, I was sitting there writing it up. Out of the corner of my eye, I see players have gathered around me and they're talking. I turned back Dude. over and I was like, "What? What is happening?" That is so funny. And I'm dead. So I panicked and I alt F forward because I was like, "No, I hope no one caught a screenshot." <laughs> so I just alt F forward because I was like, "I don't know what else to do." So I alt F forward, and so I have never. I've been looking for footage of this, and my my boss at the time yeah. wants footage of this too because he doesn't yeah. believe me that this happened. Dude, and, uh, yeah, I. It, I swear to you that went down and I was murdered by a player. I was one shot as a game master character. The, the, <laughs> oh man, the ability to say that you killed the GM, <laughs> that would be so unbelievably legendary. Like imagine if like you were streaming or recording yeah. it or, oh dude. Dude, the conversation that so the amazing. Had, we're having was really funny too. Basically yeah. the person that killed me uh, was standing there looking down and another horde player ran up and so there's this horde and alliance players standing around like standing around this dead body and the other horde player because on a game master character you see all languages so i can see everything mm -hmm. that they say and uh he had said dude you killed the gm you're gonna get banned and he was like oh no yeah uh, man that is so good dude like people yeah like what do you do like what do you do in that situation like I, I don't know like if i saw you if i said gm running around and you were targetable yeah. I wouldn't even thought about it. I would have killed you. <laughs> I would have yeah. killed you. I would have screenshotted it. I would have turned on OBS. Like, it would have been great. <laughs> yeah. You don't, even, you don't even think about it. You're just like, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. And I just, I literally alt F forward, pretend it never, pretended it never happened. And then at the, uh, at the huddle at the end of the day, uh, I brought up that that happened because I just, it was funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, my boss did not believe me. But everyone else around, everyone else on my team who I, I guess I worked with definitely believed me because I don't know if it was a, they would be like, of course he would do that. That would happen. To right. Me. Keep in mind, all of this happened and I still somehow managed to get that approval to transfer out. Because <laughs> this yeah. was all in Austin. This All this happened while I was in Austin office. Dude, that's so <laughs> freaking funny. Man. Dude, be like, I've, I've, I've mentioned a bunch of times, but being a game master was is the hands down the funnest role you will ever have in customer service if anyone ever does that job it is a blast because you get to you get to have those weird stories and you get to goof around with 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 players it's really fun mm -hmm. like how many how many other jobs do you can is there in the world where you get to role play and you will you will get cheered on <laughs> yeah well dude it's always super cool i remember like if a gm would show up to fix a situation and they got their robes, and they always have like the uh, they always have their dual wielding mm -hmm. the uh, what's the sword? It's the Argent Dawn quest, the blue sword, and then Tibus. What's the blue one called? Is it Argent Defender? I think I think so. Yeah, so they're always dual wielding. They got their two lightsabers and their blue hood on, and it's like, hello, traveler. Like I just <laughs> think it's like the funniest thing in the world. But it's like cool. Like everybody enjoys that. So I even had like a full because uh, one thing they tell you when you become a game master is they. Uh, there's, it's, a, it's a really cool process and you get you're very empowered as someone even in, in customer service where mm -hmm. uh, they basically tell you we want you guys to find your own voice and yeah. it takes you a while to understand what that truly means uh, because they want you to be they want you to be your own game master they want you to be incredibly incredibly unique to the point where that player got a one of a kind experience with you and if they right. go to if they get another game master it will be different and so I, I like went home after that after that day of like orientation when they told us that of like the game master orientation when they told us that and uh, I had basically wrote out a script of of what I wanted my uh, 
what I wanted my uh, roleplay to be because I thought we were going to be able to use like all the spill effects and everything. I thought I was like, yes, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. Man, like I, 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 like I know, like, you know, I, I may have had some experience, you know, just messing around with GM commands in some capacity. And uh, there's definitely yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, there's definitely a lot of a lot of fun things that that GMs have the uh, have the ability to do. So I couldn't imagine like if it's yeah. real, just like I, I mean, there's like I I couldn't be a GM. Like let's be honest, I couldn't be a GM for real because I, I would get fired immediately because I totally abused the, the power to go and mess the players. So a funny thing that happens, like I it's, I swear to you, this is real. Where when you're uh -huh. training to be a game master, they mm -hmm. give you about a couple. They give you a couple of hours where they put you on a test server to okay. play with all of the game all of the gm commands basically they're like this is your one time that you get to have you get to do whatever you want summon whatever you want mess with whatever you want this is the one time you get to do it so make the most of it and so all of us are running around summoning bosses and all sorts yeah. of crazy nonsense like trying to see what all we can break and what all we could do yeah. <laughs> it's oh it was so it's so so fun to basically sit around with you know a dozen other people and they're like how can we break the server go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. To figure out what all you can summon and play with and that's uh, awesome it's to, it's, to, it's to get it out of your system it's to basically so when you're on the floor you don't get the itch to do that and you know that you got to have that experience at least yeah and you and you learn why that there that isn't really a thing anymore like you you learn very very quickly why it's it's really really hard to have those old school game master interactions where they they pop up and they summon all sorts of crazy stuff and they role play it uh, and there's a uh -huh. ton of there's a ton of stories of why that's not a thing anymore because you could you could break a lot of things uh like they don't they don't tell you that a lot of the old mobs especially some of the like the old god style mobs like they're made up of multiple units so say for Cthune, uh Cthune's made up of like five body pieces or something like that so right. like, if you summon Cthune, the id actually that you think that you need to use to summon him isn't him it's his it's his body it's his body that's in the ground and you actually can't right. target it and you can't attack it but the funny thing is since you can't target it you can't despawn it so the only way to get rid of the body of gathoon is literally to reset the server dude it's so funny that you say that yeah because i was talking to some private server devs and they told me like if, if like i was messing around with commands on like a local host this is you know back in the day they told me the same similar thing mm -hmm. they said that not to spawn Cthune because what happens it ends up breaking the server like it'll crash like on on the private server like how how because it's like it's like spaghetti code like Jerry rigged together right but it, that's it's, very it's funny it's not necessarily spaghetti go, uh, spaghetti code but it was more well, no no, no the private server yeah. is the private oh, okay. server is oh, so yeah. what actually caused the server to crash is what I was told yeah for, at least for at least for WoW it was it was literally a case of how it was how it was made <laughs> it was just yeah, literally yeah. how it's literally just how it was made so yeah. it's made up of just multiple units because that's what they that's what they had to do at the time to make to make a thing yeah wow oh god there's and i don't know maybe they could have just been telling me that to make sure i don't do it but that's that's yeah that's what they said about at least with the private server. they said because they said it was like different dude but... the same thing happens when you summon like arthas so if, if you mm -hmm. actually summon the lich king the actual icc lich king uh he's his programming is tied to his platform so if you summon him not in the oh, in, in the frozen throne, when you get to the spot where he does his intermission, since he can't figure out he since he can't figure out where that center platform is, he bugs out, and he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. He actually will break Lich King because he doesn't yeah. know where he doesn't know where to run. Yeah, man, that's so funny. Like whenever all this stuff is scripted out and whatnot. Uh huh. Uh, what is this? It was it, God. It's it's really fun. Be like. So goof around with a bunch of game masters was really really fun. <laughs> yeah. And then to to kind of to kind of go through all of like the weird the weird crazy uh, things to fix things sometimes which that's just naturally in a lot of tech mm -hmm. stuff it's 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 hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like there was a this was a thing that happened for like a couple of hours where players were getting. God, what well, well happened? It was either they were getting banned or silenced on their WoW accounts or their Overwatch accounts, one of the two, because they had a starter StarCraft license. Right. For some reason, uh, it was it was really really weird. It was like okay. a starter StarCraft license, and if it existed, it would somehow auto ban their account. 
And so the way the way that you fixed it was to literally ban the starter StarCraft license and unban it, and it fixed it. Wait. Yeah. What? Yeah, that would fix it. It did. It, we, had to, we had to do that for we had to do that for like a day, and then they figured out what was causing it, and they they fixed it. Like it's it's. <laughs> Yeah, really, really wow. funny sometimes what what happens. It's really, really entertaining. That's crazy, and that's, that's why so we crazy. that's why we have things like PTRs to try and figure out all these <laughs> weird things <laughs> to break things before they get broken on the live server. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there you go. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. This is a screenshot. Crochet just linked me. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess this is a GM who like he he didn't have like his immunity flag or something turned off, and he was he was invisible. But he got stunned or something out of invisibility by guard. I guess this is a screenshot that he took. So it's just kind of funny. It's like a guy randomly shows up and he's just stunned out of the blue. That's really funny. Yeah. Or or like a rogue of stealth there and just to just like sapped him or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's what Crush you yeah, Crush was just saying. Mm-hmm. Oh. Can I uh I think those are the those are the only game master questions I I have, but like uh yeah. I wish I had some of the stories of other other GMs. There's a bunch of really crazy ones. There's a, if you guys ever look up tickets of game masters, there's a, um, there's a really amazing game master in the Austin office who plays as Hulk Hogan. Hulk and Hogan? So, yeah, he does all of his tickets as Hulk Hogan, and he calls <laughs> and he calls players his little blizzamaniacs. I swear to you, it's real. If you ever find these tickets, like they're some of the funniest tickets I've ever read. He, yeah, he calls people brother. Like it's uh, it's great. That's so funny. It is really really funny. That's awesome. Ow. <laughs> yeah, dude. I I I uh, I, I would love, and, and I know I know, I, I'm sure everybody watching would love uh, for you to come on. I, I know I know Tips and Stacey. Everybody would love to have you on Classic Cast at some point. And uh, I, I think uh, I think you guys. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure the All Craft guys. Rich, I think, is still around here. I'm sure the all craft yeah. guys would love to have you on yeah I, don't, I i've talked to rich a little bit uh him mm -hmm. and uh hotter and him have been asking me for a while to go on it so uh this is like yeah. a, good, a good opportunity i will we figure something out hopefully that's hopefully that'll happen that'll be real fun i always have fun like chatting with with those three guys because every time i see them we, we're always talking about stuff in the game like we're always talking about about the game like it's it, and it's always a good conversation. It's always fun. Yeah, Man, we were we were at um, after BlizzCon this past year, we went to um, we went to this Korean barbecue place, and Potted and Rich and Sours, we were all talking about like Mythic Plus, and I think it was I think Roger Brown was, was sitting across from me as well, and we were talking about Mythic Plus, mm -hmm. and it was like such a good conversation that even uh, JB from the other side of the room turned his chair around is like you said mythic plus and like slid his chair over <laughs> to like get in this conversation <laughs> uh, jv's a good guy I, I got to meet him for the first time actually and in, in london at, at the uh world first race yeah it was roger it was roger that's sitting across from us uh, uh yeah, jb's jb's great uh he's very he's so detailed about mythic plus that that guy has mythic plus down like yeah. It's always an interesting conversation with him because I feel like if we start getting into game details, I have to bring my absolute A game because he might know more than me. Uh probably will know more than me, let's be real here. Yeah, he's a he he's he's a really really smart guy. He he knows what he's talking about for sure. Oh yeah. He is I I believe uh Forbes quoted him as the healing authority of Mythic Plus. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can't see this, but I uh I made a gesture with that as well. Uh, to kind of <laughs> to kind of make sure to sell that <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> here i think uh i think he actually did it by the way what's up i think he actually did i think mcconnell actually installed apex oh, he should be honored because uh asman and i have been trying to get him to play for it feels like weeks but it's been days <laughs> he actually installed apex so this is going to be a special time oh man i feel mm -hmm. i feel pretty good about myself then I got mm -hmm. uh hold on let me let me add you. Uh, yeah, it's it's just S fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can find it. But uh I mean while we're kinda getting started, I guess if uh if you see any like cool questions from chat or whatever, like I'm I'm happy to try to answer stuff if I can. Uh I know oh god, this is loud. 
I know questions might get to stuff that I can't talk about, but I think everyone will understand if I can't talk about it. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm cool with, like, questions. I'm pretty sure we'll probably do it if I do classic cast and stuff as well, but... Oh, yeah, for sure. I think, I think uh, if we do a classic cast with you, I think we'll talk about some stuff, and I think it'll be probably, like, a lot of q and I think that's what we would likely do. Yeah. Um, if we can, if we can work out a class cast, I think that would be, I, I think a lot of people would appreciate that. 